let's see. Yeah, the Kickstarter is doing well. We're in the last few hours of our Kickstarter campaign, um, during which we've been making quite a few videos on the channel. And today we're going to be testing Good at 4, which I have open here. We're going to have a bit of fun with that. Uh, I just want to mention with this campaign, uh, I'll link to it in the chat. Um, Thanks to the amount of funding that we got, we'll be able to hire a developer to work on an area of Good at 4 the core developers can't get to due to the lack of funds. Uh, I actually found a very good developer, very good contributor to work on that. So while well, looking to, to work with him. Um, anyway, let's see. Will the new Kickstarter tutorial cover the newer Good at Stuff? We will remake the course for Good at 4, um, which is currently not available, right? It's pretty far from coming out, so um, that's when we will remake the course. Thanks to the amount of funding on the Kickstarter, we can make the course for Good at 3 right now, so you can just learn and use what's available at the moment. Good at 4 is in pre-alpha, so it's very unstable. Um, and next year, when Good at 4 comes out and it's stable and everything, then we can make a new version of the course for it. Um, any questions I did not answer before we get started? Um, I wanted to mention one thing. So someone, uh, Kepa Kins Pins MC, asked whether... Uh, they could export a blender material to Godot without baking. And you can already export the other shader. So if you use GLTF, I have an example here with the astronaut. I just put it in, let's see how it goes. Yes, it seems to import fine. So when I import a, a GLTF file, you can see that it imports materials and those are as made in Blender, right? Um, so we just import everything and then how do we create a new scene from it? I think right click new inherited scene, right? Okay, it's super broken in good at four. Let's see. Oh, is it? No, it's the new LOD system. Okay, so it's automated LODs here. Let's see how we turn them off. Um, skip import. I'll have to, to check the documentation quite a lot because today we are going to, yeah, you have the LOD options in the new import tab here. So what I want to say is that the I heard from Juan's presentation that they are looking into a way to make it so you can work in Blender and you can design materials and just export to Godot and the materials just work. Right now it will work if you use the other uh, material from Blender. It will work fine. So. Let's see these new options. Uh, I'm going to jump between here and I have the official docs there because the developers are um, maintaining the docs pretty well for this version. Um, can we build Godot 4 from source? Yes. Can you tell me about your system and OS? It's a pop OS. Uh, it's a laptop from system 76 or Linux. Normal split angle, normal merge angle. There are no uh, tooltips yet. Generate, save to file. Okay, okay. So normal split angle, normal merge angle. I think probably it's in the scene that I have to go get the meshes. And let's see the LODs in there. Yeah, I think something like visibility range, geometry, LOD bias, right? What if I increase the bias? Yes, you can see I can increase the LOD bias to kind of change the distance uh, from which I have to look at my character to to uh, get it like that. So this character here already was imported just as GLTF. I didn't create materials in Godot. I didn't assign textures or anything. It just worked, right? So GLTF already gives you that from Blender to Godot. Uh, why is the UI so big? It's on purpose. It's for you on the stream, especially for people watching on small laptops, tablets, and mobile phones, so they can see uh, the things, right? So this is really something we do for tutorials for because there are about 10% of um, people watching on 
mobile devices. And there's a question, would there be an Arabic version of Godot? Yes, it's already the case, and Godot is one of the few engines that supports right-to-left text. Um, so there was a recent contribution adding the ability to write in Arabic, uh, use, uh, is it Indian? Um, um, text that, that is uh, right to left. So you have support for that and probably, where is it? Uh, I think you change the language. Uh, okay, I'm going to save that as my astronaut. If I go back to the project picker, you can see here you have English and you have Arabic right here, right? And in the, in the project uh, picker. Hey, Jill. Um, we have um, Agil is the developer behind the uh, Telmap editor. So everyone uh, knows. Okay, maybe we can uh, look at that first. So here's the list of uh, features I wanted to show. Asset importing, navigation, Telmap, GDScript, physics in 2D and 3D, the new navigation server for real-time pathfinding, culling and 3D performance, right to left text. I wanted to show it, uh, no promise, because I I don't know Arabic, so I'll need to find some sample text and all. Um, uh, sign distance fields, not certain. I'm going to put it at the bottom, right? Um, uh, for shaders and those kinds of things, particles, uh, the new interface with the window system, the inverse kinematics, because someone asked about procedural animation and you have more tools for that, the new light mapper, the real-time sky shaders, the improved profiler, and the dots generation. All right, let's get started with the tile map <clears throat> already, because I worked a bit with it uh, for a video, and this one is really cool. So uh, you have the Godot 4 video, uh, the new features that shows you a bit of those, but what I want to show is setting the thing up again from the start. Um, and I'll see if I remember everything. So we're going to create a new scene and I'm going to um, create, nope, I want, okay, Control Z didn't work this time. Other node, tile map, to create a tile map. Uh, you'll see it works a bit differently from before. So here, uh, I in my inspector, it doesn't want to, okay, can't drag it right now. Okay, the tile map editor uh, was pushing it to the right. All right, I'll create a new tile set. I remind everyone that, uh, again, this is pre-alpha, this is a fresh build, and um, the, um, the expect bugs, crashes, those kinds of things, would, those would be normal. So here's the new uh, tile map and tile set editors. You have two tabs in the bottom panel, one to create the tile set, one to paint the game map. Uh, so the way it works now is you can drag and drop your textures, say, uh, let's see the textures, the floors, for example. So I'm going to go back to my tile set and click and drag the new texture. Then it offers me to automatically create the tiles in the, the texture atlas. You click the yes, and there you go. You have the tile map set up, right? So um, you can very easily navigate it, select multiple tiles like that and paint multiple at once. That's one of the, the new features. You can still um, draw in various ways. Okay, that's a starting point, that's nice. Now, what if I want to have uh, other things? If I want to have trees like here, I'm gonna go back to my uh, tile set and the nature of tile set, I'm going to do that. But this time I don't want to automatically create the textures because the um, tiles in there, are uh, some of them are larger than one cell. Right. So what I want to do is go to the, how do you do that? I can click and drag, shift, click and drag, right? Wait, 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 wait. Um, I can shift, click and drag, and I can make larger tiles, right? Tiles that are several cells for my trees and even, even larger, like groups of three trees like that, right? Um, so I'm going to just do those and then you can click and drag, I think, to create individual tiles, right, of one cell for the plants, for the, the little rocks we have here. And I'm pretty sure there's a control, perhaps, let's see. 
yes, you can control click and drag to create all those individual tiles uh, very easily, right? Control click and drag, and I just created 12 tiles at once. All right. Um, so I can go on my tile map, and one of the new things I have access to there is layers. So um, one thing to, to know about the new tile set editor is by default, it, it doesn't have too many features uh, inside the tile set resource, and the way you add them is in the inspector. So uh, when you are in the tile set resource, you have those folded sections that allow you to add only the features you need to the tile set. For example, I'm going to want uh, collisions not on the floor, right? But on the trees, I'm going to want collisions. So I'm going to go to physics, physics layers, and add one, right? And you can set the collision layer and mask for this physics layer. Uh, so let's say uh, it's just on layer one and it doesn't have any collision mask. It's only going to block the character. And I can leave it that way. Uh, you have other things like uh, navigation. You can create custom data, which is very interesting for all kinds of games. Um, and so uh, occlusion for lights, for example. Uh, one I want to create already is a terrain. Oh, no, we're going to do that in a moment. First, I'm going to go to um, editing the physics of those trees. I want to add a collision shape there. So I go to the paintbrush, select the property I want to edit in the dropdown. I'm going to expand this window. Um, click, and what I want to change is the physics layer there. So you can see it allows you to edit the, um, the collision shape of the trees. So I can edit a shape in this little editor right now, and I think Gilles is working on allowing you to edit it in there. Uh, I'll let him maybe confirm uh, in the chat. So what I can do right now is I have my shape, and I can click and drag to add it to all the tiles. Uh, my Control Z is not working right now, so uh, seems to be a current limitation of my build. Okay, so one thing you can do once you have uh, the view here. I can click and drag to edit my collision polygon. I can create one like before, so I could delete and add points. And so I'm going to do that. I'm probably going to add, let's see, can I add a point just right there? Right there. Okay. Or do I have to draw a new polygon? Does it add to... Right click doesn't remove, so I have to select the tool and click. Okay, I'm not sure um how the editor works exactly i'm just going to keep things that way uh, for now all right and it seems there's a grid as well so right now it's snapping i don't know if it's snapping to the pixel grid by default seems so uh although it feels a bit sub pixel at the moment and i don't know where do i edit the grid at the moment. Okay, you will be, Gilles is saying, uh, in the, um, with his next pull request, you, in the select mode, you will be able to do, uh, to set up the shape in the tile inspector. So I guess still in that one, because then right now I can't do it. Is that it? Yeah. If I just use the selection mode and I can resize styles and all, but it seems I can't draw a shape. Is that this one? Um, okay, so I'm just going to draw, click and drag to draw this on the trees. And maybe for those, I would need a different shape, right? Um, one thing I need to understand, no, I think what I'm seeing here is the texture uh, offsets region. Okay. That seems to be it. All right, so I can place um, collisions uh, that way. One thing is if you want to remove the collision from the thing, you clear. Uh, you can select the clear option and then you paint, right? So you remove the collision shape from here and then you click and drag on the tiles again to unset. Yeah, I, I think 
that thing it's the same as for the terrains um it's not intuitive at least it's in a thing like that i think uh something like an eraser icon or something would uh maybe just an eraser that's global here uh, that just knows that it's just remove the property for terrains for for everything right um would be easier to understand um but anyway the the painting and all is really good um and so we have some collisions for our trees so now we can go place them on our tile map and well if you place them on the same layer right it, it's going to override one of the tiles yeah i think my control z is not working at all uh in this build ui undo control z uh that's going to be problematic i'm gonna have to find maybe another build um well, I'll finish with the tile map and then I'll go maybe, I don't know, download a build or something. Um, so what you can do now is add uh, rendering layers. Where is it already? You add them. That was rendering. Oh, no, perhaps it's on the, the tile map node, right? Layers, yes. And so the first layer, we're going to call it ground. You can see it updates in the drop down menu there. Um, you can Y sort elements on the layer if you put um, scenes and all in there. So this is very convenient. And I'm going to add a new layer called trees. Uh, let's use the dirt or oh, no, the grass. The grass is better for that. I have a bucket fill uh, right there. Okay. Um, and so I have my new layer called trees. I can select it, which grays out the background. You can toggle uh, this behavior using the icon there. You can also toggle the, uh, the grid view, which takes a bit of time to update right now, but it does work. Yeah, you can see sometimes it, it takes a bit of time to update. Uh, and then you can draw the trees. So right now the, the trees draw a bit like centered on the cell, and this is not what I want. I want to offset them. So to do that, I go back to my tile set. I'm going to, nope, I didn't want to do that. And my control Z doesn't work. Great. Uh, okay, I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Uh, and so I want to go to the texture offset and I can offset a given texture. So uh, the tiles are 16 by 16. So I think I need to offset just four pixels. No, eight, of course. Uh, I offset the texture of my tree by eight pixel, and so the tree will take one cell, but will offset up, you know, uh, to be to have the base centered on the cell, which is what I want in this case. Uh, and for those, I'm going to have the base of the three trees centered on the cell. So if I draw one of the big sets, it's going to work like this, right? So I can choose when I make big tiles like those, I can choose how they draw and how they align with the cells. Um, all right, do you still use Affinity Designer? No, Inkscape. Um, anyway, those are from uh, an artist in the Godo community called Pixel Boy. Uh, free and open source, those ones, I think. Uh, well, and uh, Creative Commons, if I remember correctly. Okay, uh, the next thing I wanted to show that's really nice in this version are terrains. So if I go to the tile set, uh, to my nature tile set here, um, and to my tile set resource and the inspector, I can go to terrains, add a terrain set. So this is um, the new auto tile system if you want. Uh, I think we want to use match corner and sides uh, right now, and I can add a new terrain. So I can say something like uh, I want uh, the dirt terrain. I'm going to add another element and I want the grass um, here. And I'm going to use overlay colors. The, the colors are going to be overlaid uh, on the tile map. So things like uh, pink works well and this I will have to test to see. But okay, I'm going to go to the tile set editor bottom panel uh, to set up my terrain. So I go to the terrains, select my set, select what I want to paint. So let's say I want to paint the grass, right? And then I can select the tiles that are going to be part of this auto tile, like this. 
right? And then I can paint my bits. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. Uh, I want to fold that a bit, right? Uh, and crap, because I can't erase. Yeah, I think uh, here, uh, control shift, like right click to erase would be very nice, like it was on the tile map editor. Uh, because right now to erase, you have to select no terrain and then you have to draw no terrain. Uh, if you make a mistake and I need to go there. Um, and then go back and select the grass. You can't just uh, erase uh, with some kind of erase at all, let's say. So I'm going to draw the grass in there. Um, I'll try to go quick. I think that's how I'm supposed to draw it. Basically, the, the way terrains work is you draw the parts where you have um, the texture you want to, to auto tell. So in this case, with the grass selected, I tell the grass, right? All right, and I'm holding control shift to um, make rectangle selections for those tiles. Uh, I think I need to draw those and those corners, right? because I see some grass in there. So I'll suppose to tile like that. Then um, here I'm going to draw the area all over the grass. Um, and do it there, there, there. Takes a bit of time to, to set up, but um, at least it's a lot more convenient and faster than the existing um, tile set editor in Godot 3, because uh, you can click and drag regions. Uh, I wonder if there's, uh, maybe if Gilles is still here, uh, if there's a way to just, um, uh, to access that from the, the plugin API, because then you could, um, you could just, um, if the tiles are always sent the same way, you could just say via a plugin, like, generate just the, the tile areas, right? Generate the bit mask. Yeah, I'm going to use um, some 3D textures. Um, it does work if you don't set up the, the dot. The, the way it works right now um, is going to be something like that. So uh, last test I did at least, it's that if you use a single thing, um, maybe in, in that case, I got it. Yeah, I probably got it wrong. Um, which part is it that I got wrong? Or maybe in, in that case, do I need to, to draw like that? This is grass. And then in the top left, there's dirt. No, cause there's also dirt on the right and upside. So no, no, no. I think the, yeah, in this case, uh, I think as you say, Gilles, I need to set up the dirt for the two to interact properly. I've, I've done one test. I think it's, uh, if I set up the dirt in this case, instead of the grass, because it's the fill in the center, it will just work. Um, yeah, anyway, I'm gonna uh, set up the dirt as well then. So uh, you can see the bits from the grass stay, and now I can just set up my dirt and paint the parts that are not grass. That's it. And chosen a different color. But yeah, this is definitely a, a process that I would like to automate. Same as in uh, Good at Three, actually, it's you know the kind of stuff uh, you don't want to be doing by hand for every tile map. Um, uh, thanks, Joshua, for the 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 support uh, you're saying, spending hours every day learning Godot, uh, you're struggling with getting art to make your own game for friends, sprite sheets, etc. Uh, the best one is going to be Kenny Assets. 
Uh, Vikalens is asking why the center bit mask is always empty. Uh, this is by design in this one. I must say um, it's been a bit uh, uh, also unsettling for me. But uh, that's just that. It's, ah, shit, and I can't undo. Uh, let's see. I'm going to... Yeah, I don't know why my undo is not working today. Uh, I made a fresh build for this one, and uh, perhaps I'll, after working with the tile map, because I have extra features that Gilles has been working on, um, then I will re-download uh, another, um, another build where... Control Z works. Or is it my keyboard? No, Control Z, I can't get it to work. We'll see. Okay, okay, okay. We're getting there. Almost there. Um, I would expect definitely in those cases, for example, the center bitmap to be painted in dirt. Um, uh, because it's clearly dirt, right? And it's not grass. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's just uh, by design right now. Uh, the center bitmap, uh, the, the yeah, center bit represents the current tile, I guess. And so uh, it in practice, it only checks the surrounding ones, right, to auto tile. So it makes sense. Um, there we go, that's Jill is explaining just that, right? It's not taken into account by the algorithm. So this is why, uh, but it, it it's true that um, it being not drawn uh, needs some explanation at first. Uh, okay, let's see with the terrains now, what we can do. All right, can we get some dirt in there? So um, what I downloaded today is this ability to, um, that Jill added to make rectangle uh, selections when drawing terrains, right? And so the way it works, you can see I can select the grass and the dirt and they will interact with one another um, very naturally. So this is something you don't have in Godot 3 right now, uh, which is a new feature of the, the terrain that Jill's, Jill worked on. Uh, one thing I want to fix is uh, in the grass, I don't think I have to go to terrain, I have to go to probability right and 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 uh, I made a mistake here on the terrain right because it's drawing those uh ah yeah but it's because it's all grass with dots in the middle but this is also all grass right um huh how am I supposed to paint this one I think I have to set the terrains icon or something I don't remember why you do that um was there an icon option? Okay, one thing I can change is the probability, at least, of the other grasses. Uh, I can click and drag. So this is going to give me random strands of grass, right? Um, one thing I would like to, to mention about that, I think an improvement would be those are currently uh, using white noise, I believe, like purely random distributions and a blue noise for that would be ideal. Um, okay, and Gilles, if you can remind me how you set, uh, you can see it's drawing the, the holes in there. How can I uh, set those right? I remember there was something uh, I did in the last video that you showed me, but I don't remember what it was. Yeah, regarding the bit mask, uh, Gilles, it's really it's really just a UX thing. So it it's not so much about taking it into account in the algorithm as much as uh, although I don't know because maybe this this if you want it's that it works differently and displays uh, more importantly differently from the current uh, one. You may want to set it. Uh, that's basically uh, what a support for a sensor bit would help, I suppose. Yeah, I, I guess, I guess, yeah, that's a, a current limitation. Um, all right, so let me see. I need to go back to painting. Terrains, no, probability, zero. I, I, I remember doing something like that, so, uh, but I don't know. 
I don't know, I don't know, for the video, like there was something that allowed me to not paint this center tile, but maybe that was just that setting the probability to zero. So you can see uh, the distribution of uh, random grass in there based on the probability I chose. And note that you can use that distribution anywhere, right? So uh, one thing you can do is select a couple of uh, grass tiles in there, right? And you can say, place a random tile uh, one thing, well, we're going to do it like that. I'm going to draw a big square of grass, right? And then I select the strands and I can uh, place a random tile. So if I do an area, it's going to place those strands everywhere. But uh, one thing I can do instead is use the scattering option, which is very cool. Um, so I'm going to say uh, 10, it's like place one every 10 tiles uh, on average of course. So there you go. Uh, if you do it in an empty area, you will see it just places some random tiles. But yeah, there, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, right? But I think it's a, it's just random placement, uh, like with white noise. Um, but you can do that then uh, using, for example, I can select those plants, I can do a big scattering, like 16, at least at the, as a starting point. can just randomly place those. And of course, uh, I didn't properly work on different layers. So I have uh, to do that. Um, and well, I'm saying all that, of course, like the, the things that could be improved and all. But honestly, this is such a massive improvement over the existing uh, editor it's already much, much welcome. Um, Gilles has been working on it for a, a very long time. Okay, so if I go like that and place random tile on a separate layer, you can see I can place um, some some vegetation in there, right? Uh, someone is asking, uh, someone asked about um, improvements to grid map and I, I don't know that there have been lots of improvements. Um, and um, uh, it, does Gridmark have a similar random scattering feature? Uh, I don't think so right now. I don't think it, it got uh, lots of uh, work yet for Good 4. All right, so th there's really a lot to the new uh, editor. You can set up navigation, rendering. Um, one thing I do want to show maybe is how you can now add scenes, right? Um, so say I have some characters in there. Let me just remember how you do that. Uh, scene collection, right? You can add a scene collection. And I think you can't drag and drop scenes just yet. This feature is missing. Um, uh, so you have to create a scene and drag and drop it into the inspector there, right? Uh, and so I can say, I'm going to select uh, the other scene here and add it there. And I can uh, name the scene, I guess. Uh, I know this is the collection, so uh, NPCs. You can call it NPCs. So now if I go on my tile map, I can create a new layer on the node. I'll add a layer and I'll call it uh, interactive. And so unlike before in Godot 3, I can just place characters on the map. Um, so uh, how is it? No, I have to remove place random tiles and I don't go on the trees. I go on my interactive layer and yeah, I'm going to, to place my characters there, right? Uh, I'm going to place a dog and please don't mind that it's blinking because it's a bleeding edge version I'm putting. Uh, I'm using right now of Godot, so uh, there are some some bugs, of course. You can see the character blinking, and I think it's because it's on this layer, and yeah, I don't know why exactly it's happening, but... Um, yeah, so those are just scenes that you can edit in Godot, and you can directly place them using the map editor. You could place moving platforms, you could place NPCs that you can talk to, uh, those kinds of things. All right, if you want to see a bit more of the tile map in action, I'll link to the YouTube channel, uh, one of the last videos.
this one. Uh, okay. Can see the character blinking might be missing it because of FPS. No, I don't think so. It's, it's just a display bug probably. I don't know what I did what I did that could have caused that. But uh, one thing I, I see as well is now, I think it's this version that I just downloaded. Something happened perhaps to the bottom panel that prevents me from pushing uh, this one. I think I could fold it more easily before, right? Now it seems to have a large default size, uh, default width. Um. Okay, uh, can Godot make multiplayer cross-platform games? Yes. Um, and yeah, um, I, I think Gilles is getting to the to the end of uh, his current batch of work on the tile map tile set editor. Uh, it's a massive undertaking. Like it took a very long time. For example, for the free and open source program uh, called Tiled. Um, to get to that level, right? It really took years, and um, it's it's a very complex thing to bring all those features. Uh, Gilles did it in just one year. Uh, it's a really complete rewrite of the of the system. So from there, there are some like small things that can be improved, but that's something um, um, others can improve as well. Uh, uh, Xavier, why my donations are not showing? You you did a tough chat, um, and it's not showing. Yeah, the bottom toolbar constrains the size. Okay, I see. Um, and yeah, regarding multiplayer, uh, Lucretius is saying the um, multiplayer uh, API is really nice and uh, it's getting a lot of polish. Um, yes, I will be doing some 3D. Uh, could you show us what's new in the IK feature? Yeah, I'm going to go over the, the more uh, the features that might be of interest to more people and then I will get into IK a bit later. Uh, like the, the things that are a bit more niche. So, okay, went over the tile map. We're going to go over assets imports. Uh, okay, I'm going to rearrange those things. Uh, sky shaders, we're, we're going to do quite a bit of 3D all at once. Uh, light map, maybe. No, light map, I think it's more uh, for the, the end of the list. But we're going to do a bit of GD script and, 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 and uh, lighting. I didn't put it in there. Uh, it's um, new rendering features in 3D. One thing I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to uh, kill this one. I'm going to see if in my files I do still have the um, uh, 4.0 version. No, I need to re-download it. So I'm just going to do that. Um, it is on the official website they posted it. I think not, right? Uh, I think I can put it on Twitter. So let's go on Twitter. Friends. Um, and we're going to go to uh, Aiken's account. Right. Um. And so we need to go back because there are quite a few tweets. Let's see. Uh, or if someone can uh, can post the link, I'm not sure where I can find. I want the pre-alpha because I remember Control Z working, right? Um, like there was a build that was shared on Twitter. Yeah, there are so many tweets. Someone has it. Uh, that'd be most welcome. I didn't didn't see the control Z issue, so um, wow, so many posts. Or oh, could it be in the Good Engine account? There are fewer uh, tweets there. Yeah, I don't know why it's uh, not working. 
it should be it's the the latest master look i'm going to uh upstream master okay rebuild and let's see but sometimes it's with my keyboard options because i use um international us english uh, keyboards but i've noticed that uh some things on my desktop sometimes have uh, a few issues um okay so i'm just going to finish recompiling this uh warm up my coffee and I'm, i'll be right back Right. Hi, hi um, to the German community. I, I'm pretty sure we have a couple German users here. Um, the light Twitter hurts my eyes. <laughs> um. What program are you using for the to-do list? Um, it's uh, Emacs, uh, which I don't necessarily recommend. Uh, I do recommend maybe one called Obsidian. Uh, that's also an open source program using in Markdown. Uh, it's uh, easier to use, way easier. Yeah, where's everyone from, by the way? So, France here, but currently in Central America. Okay, while well, the program links, let's see how the Kickstart is doing. Ah, I actually have people who have been monitoring this amount much more than me, but as we're getting to the last few hours, it's going up like crazy. Um, yeah, uh, 120,000. It's insane. Okay. Oh, we have someone from living in Japan or from Japan. Um, USA, Canada, Argentina, Australia, Occitanie, um, Netherlands, Portugal, Italy, Me Mexico, Spain, Brazil, Hungary. Wow. We have, we have people from all around the world. Ah, we have another... Another person from Costa Rica here. Well, I'm not from Costa Rica, but I'm in Costa Rica. <laughs> from Nigeria, we have uh, people from Africa here. Vietnam. Slovakia. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to open the new build. Uh, it's a fresh one we have here. Let's go. And now we're going to move on to 3D. Russia, Romania, Egypt, Belgium, Bangladesh. Wow. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> Your pronunciation of Mexico was perfect. Es porque vivo aquí en Costa Rica, entonces hablo español casi todos los días. So I'm used to, I'm used to the pronunciation. But French people would say Mexico normally. Okay, welcome to 3D in Godot. I'll just ask for one thing. So uh, tell me if the stream slows down or something. The reason I'm asking for that uh, is because my graphics card is not the most powerful and I'm using that for video encoding. Okay, I'm just going to hide the skeleton uh, drawing in there. There you go. This is little Tokyo uh, from the Sketchfab contest. It's under Creative Commons. Um, yeah, I see a bit of tearing. Maybe I'm going to use the other Chunky Knight scene for now uh, because it should run a bit faster. So I had set up these 3D scenes for the, the video about the new features in uh, Godot 4, but what we're going to do is remove the environment, remove the light, and this is, I think, default stuff, right? So we have a floor, a character, and this is the default sky. Uh, I know that now, is it in the view menu? Where is it? No, it's probably here, right? You have the three dots, and now you have a much better default sky uh, and setup for the character. The grid looks nicer. It, it's really so much nicer than previous versions of Godot. So now, 
I can uh, set my default lighting in the view a bit more easily, right? Um, it's a bit like what they did in um, in um, Blender, right? They they have those nice um, settings in there, so you can choose if you use ambient occlusion. It's hard to see; it's only on the character's uh, feet. Um, you can change the the default color of the sky. You can see the sky at the top update. Um, and it's going to change the, the color on the character, max distance from for shadows. Uh, you can move the sun. Uh, the sky is a procedural uh, material you can use and you can generate an environment from that. Actually, you can add the sun as a directional light 3D. Um, I don't know if it's, I think it's not like that in Godot, but look at, I find that thing amazing. So. Um, where's the directional light? Let me select it. Okay, add it to the floor. So if I select my directional light, do we see the sun? Look at the sun. If I turn it, the sun turns with the light. I think this is new, right? So you can use that to make a day-night cycle probably. I think the, um, the sky shader, the procedural one, is much, much faster. Um, Uh, okay, let's see the, are you one of the maintainers of Godot? No. <laughs> All right. So let's look a bit at the new lighting options. I'm going to keep my directional light, which I can use to control the sun. So you have some familiar options for the shadows and all. One thing I want to note is the shadows look much better by default already. Uh, that's an important fix for Godot. The shadows are also enabled on the directional light by default, which is very useful because typically you use them that way. Uh, you still have some options, so you can blur the, the shadows, right? You can make them sharper. Uh, you have some uh, uh, interaction with the, the fog that we'll look at uh, in a moment if we can. Uh, and uh, you can change the shadow color, you can change the bias to extend them in case they don't touch the floor, or, like you don't have the contacts you want. So you have a couple of um, you have a couple of nice options in there. Um, I mean, similar properties to Guru 3. Uh, what changes really the visual quality. Now, another thing that changed is if we add a world environment node, right? So the scene turns black because we don't have an environment, but we can add a new environment in there. By default, it's going to give you a gray background, and this affects the indirect lighting, as you can see. Uh, camera effects I haven't tried, so we'll have to check that, but if I expand my environment, I'm going to edit it straight in the inspector. Edit doesn't work right now. Okay. Um, I can change the background to a sky, right? And then I need to create that sky. So it's first a sky resource and then the material you have to choose. Panorama sky, I think, is going to be a texture, right? Uh, then you have the old procedural sky. This is similar to what you have in Godot 3. I think it's faster and a couple of things like those. But um, that aside, it kind of works the same. And you have that thing also. Uh, let's see, I think it should work can turn the light to move the sun, right? So the directional light, when you use a procedural sky, is now your sun, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, this is really cool. But you have a new physical sky material, right? And this one is a more realistic kind of uh, lighting. So you have a few options to change how the, um, the light works. And let's see. I'm not sure about what the different parameters do can change the exposure, the strength. Um, you have a night sky option. I was testing it the other day. Uh, it's really nice. You can put a, a panorama texture uh, for when the sun goes down, right? Instead of having it all black, you could have some uh, starry sky and some light from there. But you can see the, the new physical sky. For one, it's very fast, the shader. Uh, this is updating in real time, of course. Um, and when it goes down, you really have the, the haze and the colors that change. Uh, now, what I wanted to test is I've seen something with clouds in there. And we're going to go look at the, um, the documentation to see 
uh, if we can do that and how it works. Uh, I just want to look at a few other features. So we have the Rayleigh coefficient that changes a bit the 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 way um, the uh, it makes the light more blue when we when we uh, take it down uh, and gives us a bit more of that uh, haze at the bottom. I don't know if that's the right term, but uh, when we pull it up, eccentricity. I'm not sure, but uh, I see that I can make the sun look more like a disc with that. And the coefficient, uh, okay, expands the sun, it seems. I'm trying to put it in concrete terms, right? Now, we're going to go to the docs, and let's see if the, the search helps us there. Sky shaders. Um, okay. Without the highlight, please. I think I had stored the link uh, in Emacs for this one, right? Yeah, there you go. Um, no, it's the same. It's the sky shaders. You can draw a background. I will be called for all non-included fragments on the screen. Uh, for the background subpasses, it will be called for every pixel of the subpass. All right, so I can write some shaders. Mm. Wait, 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 wait. Generate clouds. Is that a built-in function or? I would imagine not that you have to write something, but that that is very interesting that you use half res pass. So you can, for example, you make clouds which would be expensive, like volumetric clouds with whatever ray, ray marching or some other technique. Uh, and that you can do them at half resolution for performance, right? So that's really cool. Uh, well, I imagine uh, this is not going to work, but let's try a uh, new shader material. It's called GDS now, the, the file type. Uh, okay, so generate sky. Yeah, no, the, the functions don't exist, of course. Uh, I know it's idea, I direction. Uh, nope, shade type is sky. Okay, let's see. As in our read only time, position, radiance, at half res, blah, 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 blah. Light takes pi tau, sky built in. So the eye direction should be a built in for that kind of shader. Uh, excuse me, I need to bring this back up for the chat. So uh, the choppiness of the shadows is still uh, present. Um, yeah, there's there's uh, some, uh, so I, I, there are more features to smooth them out. Uh, the choppiness is present when you take the sun down a lot. Uh, I think there are ways to fix it at the moment with uh, better quality settings or things like these. Uh, can I access the pre-alpha? Yep. Well, I, I've compiled a version of Godot, but I think you have builds on uh, Hugo Lorcio's website. Um, so yeah, the eye direction, I can't get it working right now. Um, even though it's... I'm using the shade type sky. What if I close the scene and reopen or open the shader again? No, it says the I um, direction um, built in is not valid. So that might be a bug, like might be a known issue as well. Um, okay, so we'll, we won't find much on that, but yeah, I'm pretty sure these functions don't exist anyway, right? I just wanted to see if there were by any chance built in, but yeah. Okay, so if you want to make a sky shader, you have to code the sky, and uh, that makes sense. Um, ah, it's void sky. Okay. 
and uh, generate clouds exists. No, there's no function name for it, right? All right, all right. So the, the docs are a bit uh, outdated. Thanks. Uh, Chaosus is um, a core developer who who um, made contributions to the visual shader editor quite a lot and probably to shaders as well, right? Rendering. Okay. Anyway, we're going to pass on that one. Uh, let's see, is my control Z is still not working, right? What if I go to the Japanese keyboard? Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Well, it's fine. Um, so we're going to go back to our physical sky and just turn the, the light here. Uh, one thing I want to show is other world environment options. So let's keep moving forward. Um, okay, so the source of ambient light can be the sky or the background. I guess it's the same. I guess you can have a sky and a different background. So you can choose which contributes to the ambient light. Reflected light, you can have different sources, you can disable it. Okay, so this is for GI, I guess. The tone map, uh, we'll take a look at it in a moment. But the first thing I want to do, reflections. Uh, let's see, the new reflections should be much nicer. So what if we take the floor and we make it reflect? What is ORM material? What does it do? Wow, that's a bit weird. Uh, okay, let's see what we can do with that. Uh, I want to see in the doc what that is, because I don't know about this. Uh, is 3D optimized in Godot 4? Uh, yeah, in general, uh, Godot is getting optimization uh, all around, even Godot 3. Um, ORM opacity roughness ah makes sense. Um, ah sorry. Ah Control Z is working here. Okay cool. It's because you have the standard material, so I I, I would like to know what's the difference between the two. Uh, let's see. No docs on this one yet. Okay, um, all right. For now, there's not much documentation on that. I see ORM texture. I don't know. I see all the options from the standard material. So there's clear code, the rim, the those kinds of things. So uh, I see that you can turn stuff on. So I'm wondering if it's uh, just because you have the standard material for compatibility and maybe this one is a bit more... Look, because if I go to an ORM material and standard material, the difference is that ORM section. Um, so I don't know. Maybe it has some optimizations or things like those. No, because there you can enable the stuff as well. Uh, no, I'm not going to use real remap. What I want to do is... Uh, set it up for reflections. Although right now the, the rendering, uh, those are the, the reflections, right? They are just a bit broken at this moment. Um, let's see, what can I do here? Subsurface scattering, refraction, detail, sampling, shadows. Um, I can change the sampling of the textures. That's uh, there are there are new things in there. I feel um, if I change the roughness, I don't see much difference. Okay, uh, what is a node? Okay, so first, please don't. Um, okay, I'll just do a temporary block. Uh, don't spam. Um, and then what's a node is just that thing you have in the top left. We have a, a video on the subject uh, on the um, on the channel. Uh, will dynamic assets import be implemented? Uh, as far as I remember, RM is for the materials imported from Blender. Okay. Um, 
how expensive would it be to make weather effects with this, like sunshine and running clouds? Um, I guess you have to you have to write the shader like it depends entirely on how you write it. Um, what that was spamming, just asking what a node is, but like uh, eight times, I guess. All right, so uh, the reflections right now, uh, I don't know, looks a bit, a little bit broken to me. Uh, so it might be a temporary bug. All right, so I'm going to turn them off. Uh, screen space ambient occlusion, you won't see too much here. One that's interesting is the SDFGI, the new global illumination. Uh, this one, when you use it, it can take a bit of time to update. I wonder why it's not... Uh, updating yet. What do I have to use? Read the skylight? Nope. Ah, yeah. You can see it takes some time to update, but see the global illumination gives you that smoothness at the bottom um, of the character. Uh, yeah, someone mentioned the shadows were a bit choppy. Uh, it's I think it's because I lowered the blur on the shadows, right? There you go. That's by default you have that blur and then you can uh, improve the shadow quality, the shadow map size to have a higher quality one, but uh, that'll do for the stream. Again, I'm using my graphics card for video encoding, so if I push things too much, um, it's not going to be too great. So that's the new global illumination. You just press a button and it just works and it looks good. You can see without. Now if I turn it back on, it needs some time to uh, calculate the, the GI again. Uh, generally, when you move the camera a bit, it will update. Right, so this is especially uh, in the editor, but you can see the the smooth shadows and all. It looks really great. This one, um, I really like this, and it just works. Honestly, it's uh, it's pretty cool. Um, okay, on Google homepage, it takes a single texture of occlusion, roughness, and metallic parameters. So the ORM material is like a takes a one texture that has occlusion, roughness, and metallic uh, in three color channels, I imagine. Um, yeah, for the uh, reflections, uh, someone's saying turn on the, turn the steps up to 512, but you can see you know, that the lines you have here are just, um, there's something that's off, right? There, there shouldn't be that. Um, that's why I was saying there's probably a bug. Uh, about performance, is 4 better than 3.4? Well, there are constant performance improvements to go to 3 and go to 4. Some things, yeah, will be more performant. The the 3D side, yes, by default, like out of the box, um, the rendering is is um, is going to be faster, but uses Vulkan, so you need somewhat uh, recent hardware, like a, a graphics card that supports it. Anyway, um, one thing you can do is save the node uh, there, a world environment, open the Litlus Tokyo uh, here. I already had one, but I'm gonna remove it. And then I'm gonna get, drag and drop my environment in there, right? To see the effect of the global illumination uh, in that scene. And I want to hide again the skeleton where is it? Uh, it's not physical bone, it's the skeleton option, so it's down there. Okay. Uh, what's the, it's shift F, right, to walk in the scene. So uh, you're going to see some choppiness and all. Uh, I'm screen uh, recording, like encoding on a laptop <clears throat> with a laptop GPU, so uh, it's going to be necessarily a bit slow. I think I have, I have NTLSing in there. Maybe I'm going to remove it just uh, to keep things smooth. Uh, this is the new, the new uh, project settings. So by default, they're greatly simplified. You don't have too many options: the main scene, the uh, window options, and those kinds of things, the layers. And then you can turn on advanced settings to get everything, and really. Uh, tune your project a bit more. Also, you can see I can move things, I can dock them and all because everything is uh, using Windows now. Um, I want to know what's a node. Uh, I'll just link you. 
Uh, where is it? We have a getting started series. Uh, there we go. This video I just link will explain um, uh, nodes, scenes, those kinds of things, right? It's, it, it explains several concepts about uh, Godot. All right. But nodes are that thing you see in the top left. They're like Lego blocks uh, you use to, to build your Godot games. That's the simplest way to present it. So anyway, uh, I want to go to anti-aliasing. Now it has a section. Um, and we have the MSAA uh, disabled. Should give me... No, it doesn't give me much more performance in there. Uh, all right, so we might as well keep it. At least uh, two times. Yeah, that way it won't be too, too bad. All right, so... Um, you can see how uh, it's very interesting. So the, the light is entirely real-time right now. The global illumination. And if I go... Um, if I go down there in the street, right... Uh, the bounces, like there's no direct light in there. So it's all indirect in real time because things are close to, like the walls are very close to each other. Uh, you don't get a lot of light, but um, this is not if you want uh, pre-rendered to a texture. So this new GI looks really good. Um, if I go to my environment here, probably the screen space ambient occlusion will make more difference. You can see I can add some uh, contact shadows with that. Uh, it's very subtle by default. Uh, you can tweak the radius, make it a bit larger. Uh, intensity is also going to make the shadows more intense. And then you can choose the um, light effects uh, to add shadows in the light areas, but it doesn't make so much more difference. I can change the, the curve here, the power curve, to add more or less. Then it should be, yeah, it makes more difference, right? Okay, an important uh, feature to use in your 3D games is the tone map in the environment. This allows you to, um, if you want, remap the, the pixels uh, to when they are rendered on the screen. So uh, it allows you concretely to add contrast or change the exposure, adding or removing brightness. Uh, can I add the FPS counter to this scene? Yes. Um, again, uh, on this computer, it's probably slow. So let's see, frame time. Wow. Yeah, when I turn the camera, you see my FPS goes down. I don't know why exactly. But there you go. Uh, when I'm static, it's going fast. And let's see just one thing. It's if I turn off the SDF GI. Yeah, then it stays stable. It's just when you turn with the SDF GI, it's recalculating uh, the lighting kind of in real time. Uh, let's see what if I do four cascades. No. What if I do minimum cell size? Yeah, if I change the minimum cell size, I lower the, the quality of the GI and now it's really smooth. Uh, but also I get uh, I get more light in there. That's nice. Uh, maybe the, the resolution was too small. I can set it to two. Yeah, the lighting is good and, and the frame time is good. I do get frames going down as it recalculates the global animation as I turn. Uh, but it's looking really nice. Add occlusion culling. Uh, yes, we'll look at occlusion culling. Um, so, uh, 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 by default, you should have more occlusion culling like built in, but it's between objects. So, yeah, you have lots of objects and meshes in there. It's probably not rendering things. We can check that with a uh, wireframe. No, there's no occlusion happening right now. If we put the overdraw. It's always drawing everything. Uh, I don't know if I need anything to set that up. If I need to change... Um, if I need to change... I know that there, there's 
like some built-in occlusion calling right now. Uh, that's kind of automatic. So th there's always the thing like if you look there or something, the, the faces that are not in the view are not rendered. Of course, uh, like there is in Godot 3 as well, right? Uh, occlusion calling in that sense, but that's basic one. Let's see if I try to open the uh, scene importer. What can I find in there? So I have something for level of details. Uh, and I can probably change the bias uh, later to do that. The materials, um, yeah, there isn't much I can change in here. What if I go to the meshes and I select them all? Yeah, I think one problem with this scene for occlusion calling is uh, the way the things are split. I don't know. Uh, it's not really designed for use in a game, like it's a pre-made scene for display. Um, but you can see that by default you have some occlusion calling options, some options for global illumination, the visibility range. Uh, what if I lower the LOD bias? Those are the generated LODs, right? So making it so if I zoom out, right, I go away, it uses a uh, level of detail, so that's one optimization it got. Uh, the auto-generated ones have some errors in there, but some are working fine, right? What else do I have? Casting shadows, transparency, overriding the material for the mesh. Now, I don't know about the uh, default culling. I know that uh, uh, JFonts was working on it, um, but yeah. Uh, would SDFGI work when Godot works with GLES? No, I think it's really using features for Vulkan. All right, uh, when it comes to occlusion calling, one thing we can do is uh, occlude uh, instance 3D. I'm all going to add an occluder. So that you can do in Godot 3.4 already, right? Um, so let's see, we're going to add, uh, is it, where is the option to, is it broken right now in Good at 4? Um, so I show it in, oh, okay. I can make occlusion shapes in here. Wow, that, that are a bit too detailed, I think. And this will occlude things behind the meshes. Okay, so display the wireframe, display the overdraw. Let's see, did it change much? I don't see much change on this object. Again, this scene uh, not designed for games. So uh, if you have multiple different objects, uh, it might also be that the the um, calling. Uh, I've seen someone showcase it uh, on YouTube, so I know that it was working. Uh, and without doing too much, like the, the built-in one. Um, uh, but that was in a previous build, so right now I don't know. Uh, but that might just be this scene, right? Um, the main thing I noticed is the, the occluder node. Uh, I, I can, it says bake them, but I can't not only you can, in Godot 3.4, you can add spheres in there manually. You can attach them to to nodes that are moving around. But uh, here, okay, I don't know what I can do. You also have the, the portal calling. Now, um, is it not room manager? Okay, it's not available in Godot 4 right now. So it's in Godot 3.4. Uh, you need to activate it in the project settings. Okay. Let's see. Occlusion calling. Uh, raise per thread, BVH build quality. Use occlusion calling. All right. Hmm. 
I still get quite a lot of overdraw. Uh, let's see the wireframe. Yeah, you can see because uh, there are some small meshes in there. Uh, so I don't know. Can't quite get it to work uh, right now. But it turns out there's an option uh, in the project settings to activate the occlusion culling. Well, uh, as I couldn't get it to work, I'm going, going to leave it at that. Um, well, sky shaders would just try the sky. Culling and performance, we looked at that. Rendering and lighting, I just want to check a couple more uh, things. We have the SEFGI uh, we played with. The tone map, it's the same thing. The new ACES uh, fitted, which is higher quality, is not available yet uh, in there. But uh, yeah, when you change the tone map compared to the, the linear mode, uh, you can get quite a bit of contrast and looks really nice. I get some really bright sunlight in there. Um, this scene looks really good. I think the original author made it as um, cr under Creative Commons and then changed the license, but other people had redistributed it under Creative Commons. So uh, I thought it was not available anymore, but it is. And yeah, you can see the global illumination, everything update in real time. I see some, I know there's a gap in there. Okay, there's a bit of a gap uh, in this mesh. All right, all right, all right. Well, that, that does it for the tour of the um, rendering and lighting. Uh, what are we going to do next? The interface with Windows was a mine thing, but you've seen that some things uh, pop to Windows. I wonder if I can detach anything like that, right? I don't think I can detach the uh, the inspector. Nope. Can I right click? Can I click here and pop something? Make floating? Okay. So I can make... Uh, a floating inspector and put it on my other screen. How do I dock it back? I don't know. Okay, I close the window and it pops back in Godot. But this one in the middle, like the, the help and all, it's floating windows now. Um, so the docks I can make float. But the bottom panel and the center area, not yet, right? Um, so that's how it is for now, it seems. Uh, what is portal culling? Uh, it's a feature that allows you to define rooms and not render the, the rooms that are not visible. So um, it's a uh, I showcased it uh, in the 3.4 video, so I would recommend watching that. It's the easy, easiest, sorry, <coughs> to see. Uh, well, I'm going to, to pop it there and let's see. Streaming a video. Let's see, where is it that we show that? There you go, around here. So you're going to see that this is the the calling in general in, in Godot. 3.4, so you can see a couple of things. Um, uh, uh, this is the, the calling that Godot does kind of by default, right? When something is outside the view, um, uh, what I'm showing in there, uh, it's not going to render what's behind the camera. Um, but then the portal calling is something like that. We define two rooms in this case, so you define boxes or areas, and uh, you define portals between them, so kind of like doors or an entrance or something like that. And when you do so, the engine can really optimize the rendering because it just has to check. It, it considers that you can only view through this portal, right? Um, so that could be two rooms in a house or something like that, uh, and will very efficiently check what is behind the entrance uh, to remove, as you can see, uh, we have different objects in there. It hides the walls and all the coins in the other room. We made the walls transparent so you could see that, 
So you can see uh, shadows which might look weird, uh, but this is because shadows are calculated like they are somewhat baked to a, a texture that is then drawn on the floor. Uh, but it's not rendering the wall in there and the objects. And you could imagine you have characters, you have lots of very detailed uh, furniture or things like those. It will very quickly uh, discard them from rendering, greatly improving rendering performance. You can use that outside as well, but you have to use some clever tricks like putting a ca canyon or something like that, like uh, putting some some things in your level design to to kind of separate the areas and be able to very quickly, because if you want with portal culling, you can have a huge area in a box and just if you have a very large world, uh, very, very quickly, if through the portal, you can't see that area, it's going to hide the entire box. Um, okay, is the new physics... Uh, engine in this build it's an improvement to an existing to the existing physics engine um would enemy ai physics still be simulated in cold areas yes it's just about rendering right then you can use the visibility notifier node like before to turn off processing on a hidden node or an invisible node um or turn off everything outside the view those kinds of things um, but so the, the best thing to do when you have a very large world is you don't want to have things too far outside the view. So you just not have them in the tree uh, and you just spawn enemies and all when you get close, right? Um, any other questions? Um Okay, uh, someone is asking a question about the, the Kickstarter and the course. In Learn to Code from Zero uh, with Godot, will we learn how to optimize performance like that as well in the course? Um, so uh, I don't know if some people don't know the, the project right now, but I've been uh, hammering it so much. So in this course, this is a course for beginners while funding on Kickstarter right now. And so... Uh, this is to learn to program from absolutely zero, but using Godot. We will talk about some things regarding performance, uh, but don't expect like a course that's in-depth about how to optimize stuff because it gets very advanced, right? This is not something you can learn. Uh, some things as a beginner are just overwhelming and not relevant as well uh, until you have some experience. Yes, we'll talk about some very important things the most important one being when it comes to performance, you have to test, right? You don't make assumptions, which is something beginners make a lot um, that are like, um, you know, if I remove the if and I use a variable or something like that, does it change the performance? And um, very inexperienced people tend to focus a lot on those kinds of things that don't make a difference at all. Uh, unless you're... <clears throat> doing this operation or running this code millions of times a second, perhaps, or even more. So um, uh, we will talk about very general strategies for optimization uh, in the context of Godot. This is, uh, in general, you test the performance, uh, you don't make assumptions, um, and <clears throat> you measure things. Um, you use built-in features as they run on fast C++ code and then a couple of things you can do if you ever encounter performance problems like where you can search. All right. Um, what feature do you think you'll personally get the most use out of? Very clearly, uh, for me, it's going to be, and for the, the entire GQuest team, it's something we're going to look at next. It is GScript, the new GScript language. Uh, GScript version 2, if you want. Speaking of which, we're going to make a new scene, and I have some assets in there. So we're going to go 2D. This time, we looked a bit at 3D. Time to go 2D. Uh, the default window is very small. Let's go to the window settings and go, I'm gonna go 
a good old uh, 920 1080. And let's see, full screen when we launch the game. All right. Do I have a background in there? So I have some 2D assets I pulled in from... Ah, yeah. Okay, I see what I did. All right, I'm going to instantly add... Okay. A canvas layer. With uh, adding nodes and all right now in this build is not as responsive uh, as I'd like it to be in, as it is in Godot. 3.4, you can see the new color picker. Uh, so we're going to make a sky color in the background and the canvas layer. I'm gonna uh, set the layer down like that. All right, then I'm going to use some of the assets uh, from the, the project we're making. Uh, this one should be free and open source. Uh, not should be, it will be <laughs> free and open source, like a community game. Maybe I'm gonna set up Another uh, tile map. I'll see if I can do this real quick. Uh, it's pretty fast in this new version. So, okay, I'm going to add the tile set. Go to the tile set editor, add the dungeon, and it wants to create the atlas, but the size is not right yet. So I'm gonna go. Was it 128? What we did by 128, and we have a grid here that seems to be of a different size. No, it's still. Okay, so I changed the size here. This is cell quadrant size. Uh, this is used for batching. So I think you can use the tile si size at least. Then if I go in there to the tile set editor. Aha, the grid. And this, this is a bit bothersome. Uh, do I have to... Th this is a bug, I think. Yes, I had to re-add the texture uh, to do this. All right, so now I have my tiles done. I'm just going to very quickly... Uh, I'm going to add layers to my tile map. And I'm not going to add collisions just yet. Just a visual layer. So this is going to be ground and walls. Uh, so that way I can draw the walls on a different layer. On the ground, I'm going to go... Um, with this to start with. I'm just going to put some ground and walls. Uh, there you go. And tile map should be at the top like that. And we're going to draw some walls on the walls uh, here. Um, I need to, I wanna get, maybe I, I don't want this line. I wanna get those, all right. And uh, that way I can sample those two and I can do a line of them. Uh, and I'm going to sample those two and draw the, the angle. And now, yeah, it's so much faster to make a, to make that. So now I can sample those and put them at the bottom. I have two walls. Okay, let's call this our level. Um, on topic of optimization, will there be pointers in the new scripting language? No, no, no. Uh, pointers are definitely not coming to GD script. Um, that kind of low level stuff, if you want it, you'll use the GD extension. There you can use, I mean, you can use multiple languages, right, in uh, Godot. And so G script is really for fast and um, easy use, let's say. And so it's not going to get um, uh, very low level optimizations. All right, I'm maybe going to turn on pixel snap, I guess, uh, just to avoid the um, current issues. 2D snap versus to pixel, 2D transforms to pixels. Nope. Uh, where is it? I wonder if it will maybe not show in the game right now. Okay. Um, how will writing a plugin for 4.2 be different from 3.x? I mean, just the API is changing a bit, but um, yeah. About the same. Okay, so I'll add 
Uh, I made this a sprite, but we're going to make a kinematic body 2D. Uh, it's called character body 2D now, right? And it has new options. You can see now some of the things, this is really cool. This is one of the many, um, not so small, but the many improvements and polish that you're getting uh, in Godot 4. It's lots of things you would add to scripts every time and uh, those are now just property and you can just call move and slide and you don't need to specify all the properties. So, okay, we're going to have a character, the sprite, and we need the collision shape 2D. Um, do we use a capsule in there? Why is it not drawing? My capsule is... And Okay, wait, the body is there. So I need to reset the character's position down here and we're going to update the collision shape size. Ah, capsule editing finally, finally is like that. This is much better. Before it would grow the height when you edited the, the width. Um, how can I get good for pre-alpha? Okay, uh, let's find the links because the, the link because multiple persons are asking. So I think uh, Hugo Lorcio uh, Guru builds, right? I think he has those unofficial good builds. Let's see uh, which version is that. I think those are, are currently less optimized than the official release. Also debug symbols. Um, I guess that should be good for, right? That should be the master build. Um, there you go. Uh, are there, is there something about plugins? We'll be able to write them in different language and others will be able to use them without, um, uh, I think so. Um, the um, the this version I think has C sharp built in, so uh, I think there won't be a different version for C sharp anymore. I, if I understood it correctly, uh, I heard Juan talk about something like that. And uh, Zero Wolf, if you're trying to put links, I think now uh, YouTube just blocks them. It blocks lots of things. Like you, you can't even put the message or something. Uh, I'm not seeing any links in there. When someone puts a message that's an insult or something like that, will instantly be removed by the like YouTube does that now. Uh, but um, yeah, I think for links it just blocks them. All right, so I'm going to save that uh, as a scene uh, right there. Let's see in 2D, and we're going to start working with both uh, GD Script 2 and Physics. I think, so the auto-completion sucks a bit right now, if I remember correctly, um, but let's see what we can do. So one thing, the main thing you're going to see in here, it's um, going to be, it's going to be uh, very similar to the previous version of Godot and uh, at the same time, a bit different. Uh, I'm going to see if the settings, maybe it's just my settings that, that sucked a bit. So completion delay, idle pass delay, we're going to go 2.8, something like that. Completion delay, zero. Uh, auto brace complete, okay. It's finally on by default. Add type hints. Yeah, I'm a big uh, fan of uh, type hints and I want to show them because it's part of the, um, the new features in a, in a, uh, should errors be reported to Hugo? No, clearly not. Uh, it's to the issue tracker and you need to check that, um, you need to check that they don't already exist because there are thousands of them and you don't want to create du duplicates, which happens very often. 
regarding the new Kickstarter, will you be changing it and updating it to work with new changes that work with Godot 4? Also, will you do C Sharp in Godot? For C Sharp, I'll say it straight away. No, this is not planned yet. Uh, and the new changes for Godot 4, yes, when Godot 4 comes out, we intend to, uh, we plan to redo the course for Godot 4, but we'll be making it for the current stable version uh, right now. Okay, uh, what are we going to do? Why am I writing the ready function? I'm getting uh, a bit si uh, sidetracked, like I'm losing track of things. So uh, we're going to write physics process. And what do we want for the character? We want a speed. Uh, all right, I'm just going to calculate a direction. And then uh, I can get the new, there's a new feature in Godot 3.4. Oh, I forgot it in the video. There's a really great new feature. Well, it's a small helper, but you can now um, get a move direction with a joystick and just one function call. Uh, I'm just going to add action. So I have the UI actions, which are built in. Now I'm going to add um, move. Okay, left, move right, move down. Move up. Um, okay, I'm going to do W. Ah, oh, wow, this is cool. You just have to to do an input now, and this is a nice. This is a really nice feature. Uh, you don't have to. You don't have that drop down where you have to use different. Uh, uh, where you have to tell, um, if you're going to use a joystick or something like that. So move up. Um, okay, actually, I'm going to go get the game controller. We're going to see if it works with the, the Xbox gamepad. Be right back. Okay, let's plug you in. Um, okay, let's see. So we're going to do move left. I take the stick left. Yeah, I'm uh, pressing directly there. Ah, oh, this is so much better. This is cool. There are lots and lots of small things like these that the developers have been thinking about, right? Um, which will be so much more convenient moving forward. So uh, get... Uh, Ve uh, it's called get vector, get get vector. Is it negative x, positive x, negative y, positive y? So, yeah, I think it's it's this one. Uh, so it's a string name parameter. Okay. Uh, so I guess it's move left. Uh, move. Right, it's not completing them now. Okay, I'm just going to do boom, boom. And this was the third argument. Um, positive, negative Y, positive Y, and dead zone. Right, negative Y, positive Y. Uh, alt, left, and right not working at the moment. Uh, negative Y, up. And positive Y, down. All right. Now we can just do move and slide. Uh, direction times speed. Expected at most zero. What? Moves the character based on motion velocity. Wow. So you have the velocity built in now. That's cool. If I do motion uh, velocity is equal to Direction times speed. And I have a character. That's it. Yeah. Uh, look, the get vector thing also seems to normalize that. You don't need to normalize the direction. I don't think I'm moving faster if I go up or right or diagonally. Hey, that's cool. They're just those couple lines of code. 
right? And it's so much better than before. This is really good. You have the up direction there. You have the motion modes. What are they? Uh, defines the behavior of move and slide. Okay, well, I need to go to character body 2D and uh, okay, uh, motion mode. Apply when uh, notions of walls, ceiling, and floors are relevant. Uh, the will react to slopes, acceleration, and slow down. Okay, so I need to go to the free mode for a top down game. The speed is constant when you slide against colliders, right? With this mode. Okay, free mode, the minimum slide angle, minimum angles in radians. Well, it's shown in degrees here. The display has the degrees now for the angles. This is really cool. Uh, when it encounters a slope, the default value is 15 degrees. Okay. Um, moving platforms. So what do we have? We have some settings. Um, okay, so this is the inertia. You can choose if when you, you're on a moving platform and the character jumps, for example, in a side-scrolling game, you can say, uh, apply the, give the inertia to the character only going up or always, even when going down or, or on the sides. So if you're moving on a platform and you jump, you will get the velocity of the platform plus the character's velocity probably. Okay, you can choose which layers you can interact with, with this character. The collision safe margin, um, I think the developer uh, maintainer of the physics engine told me now we're moving to um, go to physics by default and go to physics to safe margin. You just don't need it. Uh, what do you have? Collision layers and masks, pickable, uh, disable mode. What is it? Behavior when the process mode is set to disable. Remove, make static, keep active. So I think this is for when you pause the game. Because now the, the this is also another thing, uh, the process mode, like the pause uh, process tells you if you can pause this, um, uh, process when paused, always process, uh, or disable, I don't know what, what the difference is exactly, but have more flexibility in the pause system that's built into Godot. Motion velocity includes the delta. Yeah, it's a velocity, so it will, it's a speed in a given direction. Um, and so you don't have to multiply by delta. Uh, anyone can use Godot 4. Yes, you can, you can test it. Uh, we have a link above in the chat for that. If uh, anyone can reshare this one uh, for when people ask for, for that. On the download. Uh, okay. 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 Um, so now, um, difference in the language. It's you use this uh, at the these annotations to um, to export variables, and you now have specific exports depending on what you want to do in the inspector. Multi-line text, note path, uh, placeholder, I don't know what that is, a range, a minimum and maximum, I guess. Uh, you have the ability to add an icon to your class in there with an annotation on ready variables, uh, tool mode for the top of your script uh, to make your, your script in tool mode, RPC for online. But you can see color without alpha, um, exponential easing, file to have the... the File picker, when you uh, click the property in the inspector, there you go, those kinds of things, right? Uh, and I don't know the hints, how they work now. If I go in parentheses, uh, I don't know, multi-line, no, I don't know. Property hint, multi-line text, those kind of property hints, I don't know if you can use them. Um, Not sure, because it seems those are the export modes. 
method script property of variant type in pointer max. I don't know how you do the the range now. I would expect a. Okay, let's see what it says with the error. Requires at most. Okay, the annotation doesn't take arguments. So I don't know how you define the value ranges like before. <clears throat> um, but so now I need to save. I have my speed I can edit now. Uh, I would like a slider or something like that, which you can get when you set the minimum and maximum in Godot 3, but right now it's not available. So, um, ah, this is cool. You can now select the currency. There are really lots of small improvements. Okay, so I have a moving character. All right, let's um, add some colliders to the tile map, right? So I'm, I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna move the character uh, as well to be more in the center of the screen. And now in the tile set, gonna add some uh, physics, right? Some, um, a physics layer. It's going to be on layer one. And uh, you can attach materials now to the physics layers. It's not just a collision box. So if you want to change the physics properties or use uh, rigid bodies and have some bounce or friction, all those kinds of things, um, you're going to you're going to um, have them applied through the tile map. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go to the tile set editor. All right, can I? I can't shrink that. Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, expand this and go to paint, select the physics layer. And so by default, it makes the square so I can just paint it on my walls. Just gonna do this real quick over there. If we use those, maybe not, but there we go. Uh, collisions done. All right. Much faster than before. So much faster. Uh, we're gonna do visible collision shape and test the scene. And there you go, this is blocking my character now. Uh, one thing I can change as this is a top-down game, I'm going to use perhaps a circle shape, right? Make it a bit smaller, because I don't want the head of the character to collide with the walls. There you go. Uh, the next thing we can do, of course, is add a camera 2D to our character. Any changes in there? Let's see. Nope, this is all uh, like before. For now, we can have smoothing in there uh, with a high speed, drag handles. Nope, uh, camera is still the same. I mean, <clears throat> it works well, so. Uh, summary names there, I see ordering now. Uh, I don't think it, I think it was named. <clears throat> um, Z index ah, and yeah the way sort now there's no node anymore right you can use way sort directly on all 2d nodes this is good um this i think there's an add range tag or something ah, okay so this is what the range thing export range and let's see it's going to take two arguments so between uh, 100 and 1000 I guess and now we're going to get the slider probably yeah yeah now we get the slider oh so I need to click the little slider down there ah, it's not working right now clicking on the slider thing uh, doesn't get the slider to move like before uh, well, I guess, okay. Searched a bit about GI, uh, GLES2 wasn't able to support GI and what's, it's one of the reason uh, they won't support it. Uh, yes, this is correct that uh, GLES2 is very limited in terms of the feature set. Uh, it's made for mobile phones and also there you would use the new light mapper, which we can uh, maybe take a look at a bit later. All right, uh, camera, camera is not current and the character is slow because I greatly reduced the speed. Uh, camera needs to be made current. 
yeah, now with the, the camera, we're getting the smooth motion problem that is uh, messing with the tiles. Um, Gilles, the, the developer behind the tile editor, told me that, yeah, he wanted at some point, if he was able to do that, like had the time, look into uh, that technique that consists of uh, adding some padding around the tile textures. So you, you duplicate the surrounding pixels and blur them. And this completely, this is the ultimate solution to get rid of what you're seeing, the blue leaking behind the tiles. Uh, surprisingly enough, it's something I've used in games, right? That kind of making textures like that. And uh, the, the trick is you use something like uh, Photoshop or GIMP or whatever, and you take your tile set, you add some padding between every tile, so some empty space, you duplicate the, um, the whole texture and blur it a couple times and uh, blur it and duplicate the, the blurred version a couple times, put it in the background. That's how you would get rid of this problem because then it's a texture sampling issue. So this happens with all texture sampling, all engines, right? Um, it's not specific to Godot. Although I think, wasn't there a way to clip uh, rendering UV clipping? I know it has some issues, but no, it doesn't work. All right. Another thing we can do is go get the texture in there, dungeon. Uh, where do we change? This is in the import, right? And we're gonna go with... Uh, Nope, this is not a, a texture like that. Um, we can't change the texture filter here. I know I think the texture filter is now a property of everything, anything that uses a texture, right? Uh, I think they changed that, which makes more sense, to be honest. Um, But where would I change that on the tile set texture? Filter nearest, right? Repeat. Nope, I don't think you need some repeat in there. Yeah, with nearest filter, you're going to still get some artifacts, right? Because it's it's a bit too sharp with the smooth camera. So now I guess uh, linear, nearest mid map, anisotropic. Nope, I don't think that would help. Um, so let me see. Uh, Pusinella, pull Sinella. Let me see, because I didn't see your message. Uh, Alright, GI won't be in good at four. Uh, at least not right away. No, no, it's already there. Uh, if you're talking about uh, GLES2 specifically, uh, GLES2 won't have GI. Uh, just because it's a very limited standard. Uh, but so yeah, the, the clear answer is um, uh, GI is there already. Global elimination. I showcased it earlier in the video. Um, all right, so that's for uh, 2D physics. What are other things? Well, we started using uh, GDScript as import. I showed it at the start, physics in 2D and in 3D. Let's um, look a bit at that. Um, so I haven't tested in 2D the, um, Excuse me, I'm getting a bit tired. I didn't have too much sleep. Um, the Yeah, I didn't try the rigid bodies in 2D, uh, which we have, of course. I'm going to stop the running game. Um, and we're going to make a simple 3D scene with the default sky. We'll do the job. And we're just going to have a uh, floor, which you make with a mesh instance. We're going to make a box. Uh, can I, I don't have gizmos to edit the box interactively right now. So let's go 40, 40. 
uh, in the Z axis and move it down and that will be our floor. All right. And we're going to uh, add the sun to the scene. There we go. So we can just turn the, the view around. But uh, what I want to do is now get my astronaut in there. Let's see. Yeah, the problem is it's from... Okay. Uh, this character is made in Godot 3, so I can't use that. Probably the script has... Yeah, it's the, um, it has lots of issues, but just want to be able to copy and paste uh, some code. Okay, um, we have the ground. Now we're going to add a character. So character body 3D. Uh, and we're going to add our mesh as a child of it. Uh, the mesh has the LOD bias issue. So uh, let's see how do I do that. Maybe... I need to make, uh, okay, it won't let me, the, oh, it was deleted, but not updated instantly. So I'm going to make a new inherited scene. Uh, and what I need to do is you have the new level of details that are automatic, but they are too violent in this one. So I'm just going to remove extra call margin. Okay, I'm just going to crank up the LOD bias to not have the LODs kick in and not destroy uh, the character. This is going to be, well, our model for the character. Uh, and we're going to... Um, okay, and why is my model not displaying in here? Okay. It broke. It's kind of one of the issues. Um, okay. What broke? It was working moments ago. The size is problematic. Uh, so root scale. That's one possibility. One possibility is it's way too big. Uh, import the animation light map. Um, ah, can I turn off? I can turn off generating LODs. So that's good. Uh, still broken, right? The mesh got lost. So, okay, clearly we have a bug in there. Let's see the errors. Uh, yeah, I don't see anything particular. Well, it's pre-alpha stuff, so that seems to be a bug. Okay, just going to forget about the character model. I'm going to use just um, a regular capsule or something for the character. Uh, otherwise, we're going to lose too much time. Uh, height of 4, radius of 1, or 0.5, and 2. Is good of 4 supposed to be really easy or really hard to understand? Well, what I'll say about it is, um, um, it's, it's, uh, really powerful, so it has more features than Godot 3, but it's simpler in general. Um, does it have Vulkan yet? Yes. And did you try the decal node yet? No. Uh, that's a good one. I'm going to add um, to there. So let's add a static body. Uh, I'm going to put the mesh in there and I need to add also a collision shape in there just to have a floor to collide with. Wow. Uh, and it's going to be a box shape and the box shape is going to be of the same size as 
the current box roughly. Okay, now we have a box shape, we have our capsule um, mesh instance, and I do want to change the material just to change the color so it pops, right? I'm going to use pink, blue, there's a blue background, so I'm more going to go towards uh, those kinds of colors, right? It's, that way it will be more visible. So uh, let's look at the camera setup behind. Ah, I need to add a collision shape, of course, for the character body. And it's going to be a capsule, who would have thought? Same, 0 0.5, 2. Okay, and maybe I'm going to move this back down. Uh, let's see. Uh, I need to go out of the mesh and into the transform position. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to move the two here up one unit. Okay, perfect. Uh, so we have a collision and I want a camera because we need that for 3D. So I have a camera, but I want to see if I have uh, the spring arm. Okay, and I'm going to attach the camera to, to the spring arm. Uh, someone at the start of the stream was asking, how do you do a, a camera that moves away from the character? Well, it's pretty simple. You use the spring arm. It, you can see the line, it draws in there. It's going to push the camera there. Uh, I'll make the camera current and uh, we can get a preview. I think it should position at the end of the, the arm. Let's see. There you go. Okay, I need to add the environment to the scene. Otherwise, I'm going to get a black background. All right, and you can see the, even if I move the camera forward, okay, so the colors, the color of my ground uh, is not really helping to visualize everything. So I'll change that right now. Albedo, uh, what do we use? Blue ground. No, I'm going to use a, a darker blue. This is just so we can see all the lines. I'm also going to remove the grids and the origin. I didn't really want those. Uh, just so we can see the, the camera and everything else, right? Maybe reset the default layout. Note that we haven't been we haven't had a single crash. We've seen some bugs, but um, uh, I've seen videos of people doing stuff and a good old fall would crash, but we don't really have that, that. So right now we have the spring arm and you can see as soon as I test the game, the camera moves back and this is the strength of the spring arm that's going to push things back. Okay, we need to save that to a scene, 3D character body and add a script to it. Um, and so I think the character body similarly to the 2D one now has lots of settings built in, right? How it moves on moving platform, the snap vector, like the snap vector length, you don't have to create your own variables for that. Um, all sorts of things, if it stops on floor and those kinds of uh, properties. And where is the motion? It's not exposed. Maybe it's not in the inspector. So it seems you need to set a property uh, to move the character now into the like in 3D. Since there will be some update uh, in GDScript, well, your website tutorial will still be uh, will still be accurate, but we'll do updated content for all good at four, basically. Mm. We'll have to update a lot of stuff. Uh, we'll have to see if we do like keep the good at three stuff and yeah. There's someone doing a, um, automated uh, project translation, so like porting the code to GDScript and all, which is probably not going to be perfect and it's not going to work for very large games, I would expect. But uh, someone has been working on that pr project conversion tool. Um, ah, crap. Okay. Um, so let's code our character real quick and... Um, but yeah, the, the tutorials and, um, and, uh, like it will take time to port everything to good at four. Cause we have massive amounts of content. Um, 
and this will be the same for everyone else, right? It's not something you can do overnight. Um, but we'll do our best to uh, be very reactive with that. All right, so I go with physics process. We're going to have a move direction. Uh, same thing is going to be get vector uh, input dot get vector. Actually, I'm going to copy it from character body 2D because it's the same thing, right? I need um, an input direction. I'm going to call it input direction because the move direction is a bit different, right? You go move left, right, move up and down. And um, in 3D, uh, it's a bit different from 2D. Actually, I'm going to work on two scripts in parallel, on the character and on the camera. Uh, let me just see. So, okay, uh, the spring arm, if I rotate it, yeah, it rotates and it's going to rotate the camera at a distance from the character. And who was it? Um, you do, would you mind trying out animated texture or decal node if you do test decals? Well, you were saying that this doesn't work, so probably it's, it just doesn't work, right? Um, maybe there's a bug, maybe it's not implemented yet. I don't know if you've looked at issues because it's when you want to know if something doesn't work, it's the place to look. And then if you can't get it to work, you need to report the issue, like if it doesn't exist. Okay. Um, so I'm going to make my camera in there. And the thing I want to do is use uh, a handle in input. Um, if the event is a mouse motion uh, event, then we're going to store the event. And let me see, it has X and Y. How is it uh, pressure? I know it's called relative. Okay, so we're going to have uh, there a uh, mouse offset. It's a vector to uh, zero. And um, I kind of have the microphone in the way. Wow. Um, mouse offset equals event dot relative, right? And that's interesting. It does complete it, even though all I said is this is an input event mouse, mouse motion. So keeps track of the, the type. Interesting. Um, all right, so in physics process, we're going to rotate the camera uh, based on that mouse offset. So um, we have to do around the x-axis and the y-axis, right? Um, um, if there's, if um, mouse offset dot is equal to prox vector two dot zero, What? Why? There, there were two arguments in there. No. Okay. Uh, maybe it's the epsilon that you check against. Um, um, okay. So uh, mouse offset is equal to prox back to zero. zero. Uh, you return. Otherwise, we're going to rotate the camera. So rotate uh, Y around the Y axis and uh, it's going to be mouse offset X multiplied by some constant. So, uh, well, we can do an export um, mouse sensitivity. I'm not going to do the, ah, yeah, I'm doing keyboard and mouse now. Well, it's okay, because I could do the, the joystick. Yeah, I'm going to use the joystick. You know what? Uh, I don't want to. I want to play with the gamepad, so let's do that. Sorry, it's a bit messy. Uh, this is the last day of the Kickstarter. I've been working uh, for more than a month straight, so... With some very long days. Uh, please be kind to me. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu, as we say, and uh, as we say, as the Japanese people say. <laughs> Hey, Securus. Um, thanks for dropping by. I'm uh, testing the 3D stuff now. Okay, so we're going to... Um, uh, how can I uh, call that? Uh, rotate uh, camera, right? Uh, it's a long name, but let's go with that. Uh, 
Oh, just rotate right. I'm going to keep it a bit shorter. Uh, okay. Rotate left, rotate right, rotate up, rotate down. And now this is uh, very cool. Uh, if you haven't tested um, uh, Grid 4 yet, I was showing this earlier. This is how you set up the input. I just have the game controller. I just say add an input, just use it, touch the button, done. Uh, works with the keyboard. I guess it works with the mouse. All right, so with that, we're going to forget about mouse support for now. Just do for the gamepad. So uh, the move direction, I'm going to copy the input direction, um, is going to be uh, based on that new get vector function. But instead of move, it's going to be rotate. Uh, and maybe I made a mistake now that I think of it. I've done it without reading the controls. Let me check. Left, right, up. And down. No, it's it's okay. Um, so I have my input direction, and based on that, I'm going to rotate the camera. So uh, I'm going to do the same thing. If input direction dot, uh, well, we can do length length squared, or is equal, I guess, right? Uh, vector two dot zero. Then we return. We don't want to rotate. Otherwise, we're going to rotate y. And the angle is going to be input direction dot uh, x multiplied by some uh, bar rotate sensitivity. Uh, I'm going to do it as a vector two. Let me think. Do I want a different sense? No, I don't want a different sensitivity on uh, the x and y axis. So we're going to say uh, five. Okay, let's see if this works. So input direction dot x times uh, rotate sensitivity times delta. Um, okay, and we're going to do something similar. Uh, rotate. Uh, so rotate y is going to be like this. And uh, the tilt, I guess it's called tilt. Uh, is going to be rotate around the x-axis and it's going to be our vertical input direction times rotate sensitivity times delta. Now we do need to set the transform dot um, um, angle. Is it in the transform? Position rotation. There's a rotation property. Simpler. Um, rotation dot y is going to be clamped, right? Clamp uh, rotation dot y between zero and uh, it's in radians, right? It shows it in degrees now, but uh, it's in radians. So we want to go uh, 90 degrees maximum. Now we're not going to go that high, right? Uh, it's going to be minus 30 degrees. Okay, we can do deck to rad for the conversion. Uh, 30 degrees. And we're going to go up to 80 degrees there, right? We're going to clamp it. Uh, what's the error? Deck to rad is in there. Uh, found colon instead. Oh, excuse me, I put a colon equal. All right, for the X rotation, we're going to clamp the X rotation. Oh, no, we're going to wrap it, right? It's going to wrap float, uh, rotation.x, and the minimum is going to be uh, minus 2 pi and 2 pi, right? We do a full turn and we wrap. Okay, minus 2 uh, times pi, uh, 2 pi. Oh, no, we just go between 0 and 2 pi. That's one full turn. Okay. Uh, any questions? Um, any questions? No need to clamp Y 
only X. No, you definitely need to clamp Y, otherwise the camera can tumble, right? So you need to limit the rotation. Oh, excuse me, it's the opposite, of course. Um, uh, wait, rotation? No, the Y rotation is around the vertical axis, right? And the X rotation is the the um, tipping, right? Uh, yeah, so of course it, it's um, I inverted the two, right? Uh, ha, huh, come on, rotate axis around the X axis. Let me check. This is the Y rotation. This is the X rotation. Uh, so yeah, you need to clamp the X rotation like that uh, and to wrap the Y rotation like that. The, wrapping the Y rotation, it's just so the angle doesn't accumulate indefinitely. Um, you won't see it if you just let the character... Uh, let me show you the effect first. Uh, we're going to try the scene. Okay, uh, I need to try it here. Okay, and wow, 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 wow. Yeah, I'm, it's local X and Y I'm turning here. Okay, so this is not good, but I need to fix that. This is interesting, but this is just so if you keep turning, you don't accumulate the angle, right? It resets to zero every turn. Uh, it's interesting that the rotation is doing the, the axis like that. Um, what did I... Do wrong again. Um, so first, the X rotation should be limited, right? I can't. Hmm. Where is it? Does yeah, it did get clamped when I did that, but no. Um, I think rotate Y and X does it. Yeah, rotates the local transform. So this is the problem. Uh, so now. I'm going to do this instead. I'm going to instantly uh, plus my value, right? And this is going to be uh, clamp this plus my value. Is the rotation local? Rotation part of the local transformation, right? Um, how do I get the global? I have the global transform. Um, ah, it's weird, we did, because the problem is when you rotate one axis, the other axis, uh, do that, I can rotate it based on the motion vector, right, but I need a, an amount of degrees, which I have here, um, so we're on the spring arm. Okay, I'm just going to do that for now. Mm, no, changing the property, you can see it works. But so why do you have to limit? Uh, this is for this, right? You don't want the camera to, to tumble, um, to, to start to roll over. Okay, uh, go back to the camera and I uh, got those wrong. Uh, it's because minus is going up, right? So I need to go between uh, minus 80 and plus 30 degrees. And now I'm going to change my default scene in the project settings. Now while working with this 3D scene, uh, where is it? Uh, application configuration? Nope. Where is the run? run okay and i can change the main scene here i had to use the advanced settings uh do you know if it's possible to 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 uh export custom classes in gdscript 2 uh depends on what you yeah as uh wendrick is saying you can already do that in godot 3.2 uh people i really need to go to the um, to the restroom. I'll be right back. Uh, I'll just leave a little message in there. Go, go, Inkscape, open up. 
uh, and I'll be back really soon. Forgot to prepare this one before. I also need to refill my uh, water. Okay, okay. Be right back. back um all right what happened um boom, 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 boom. All right. Uh, sorry, I, I just noticed uh, I hadn't rotated the, the table. Like the, the camera was not necessarily the best view. Um, well, we could simplify those lines, but uh, that works for our camera, which means we can now uh, do this, move our character, and we're going to need to move it relative to the camera. So we need to get the camera. Uh, no, I want the spring arm in here. Right, and so um, how do you do the input direction relative to the camera? You do it like that. You, I guess you do camera dot global tr uh, transform dot basis dot x form the input direction. So what this is doing is uh, we have our 2D input direction. Does it work if we, because this is going to give us a 2D vector. And I think, no, we need to do it a bit um, uh, raw uh, direction is going to be a vector three, right? And um, it's going to use components from the vector two. So let's see the axes. Uh, local axes on the character. Uh, blue is forward, red, so it's X and Z. Uh, so my X direction is going to go to, wait, the X direction and the Y is going to go into the Z. So uh, it's going to be input direction. Yeah, the completion of symbols is not working right now. Uh, zero uh, input direction dot Z. Right, and maybe we need to flip it. Uh, let me see, because 
move left, move right. Uh, so let's see with the transform. If I move X, this is positive. I know, but the camera will be there. So negative, positive. Yeah, but the <clears throat> Z is positive back and negative forward. So I think I need to go minus input direction dot Z. Uh, the minus input direction dot Y, sorry, in the Z slot. Then I'm going to transform that input direction based on the camera and it's going to be, uh, it's going to give me the direction relative to where the camera is looking. Uh, Sekura is asking, when are you coming back to Japan? Um, so, well, uh, right now we're in Costa Rica. Uh, we're going to France first and then we will have to see my partner is going to, to study uh, pastry to be specific. And for, we don't know what the future will be like because that's going to take a few years, right? Um, I really miss in some ways living in Japan, but also living here uh, made me relativize uh, France a lot uh, in some aspects like security, uh, like safety, um, infrastructure, the transports and all that we have. Although, well, of course, I feel very close to the Japanese culture, but the the thing is, uh, for my uh, partner, uh, it's a bit more difficult, the tatemai, those kinds of things. Anyway, um, well, um, direction is going to be this, right? Uh, ah, excuse me, it's raw direction dot, uh, wait, is this correct, right? not infer the type because the initial value is a variant. Uh, it's because... Okay, I need to set the variant type. Or I'm going to do vector 3, right? I want a vec vector 3 back. Uh, control clicking on next form doesn't work. It works on in other places, but somehow it didn't work there. Yeah, my my partner loves pastry. She she's a professional translator, uh, actually Japanese translator, uh, Japanese to to Spanish English, right? Um, but uh, she wants to study pastry, and so France is a very good place to do so. Um, uh, her dream is to is to was to do that. Uh, so yeah, we we are going to, to do that. I mean, in France, it's very easy to study, right? There, there are lots of jobs as well. Um, does native scripting work yet? Yes. Um, but yeah, for example, for example, she made our wedding cake and it was really good. Um, I was going through Godot 4 for 2D. I couldn't figure out the auto tile maps features. Yeah, you can go back in the video. Uh, the start of the stream was about tile maps. Um, okay, so now we need to go. This is motion velocity now, the new way this works. I need to add a, a speed variable. It's going to be a, equal to, uh, this is in meters per second. So let's say four. And motion velocity is going to be equal to speed times direction. Then we can call it move and slide. And now this is all we have to do, right? This is a, yeah, this is crazy. This is good. Uh, and move and slide is Boolean now. Let's see. Um, returns true if the body collided. Oh, so now you can check if the body collide. This is much better. Because one problem is you had before, well, you could go loop over the slight collisions, but now you can say, well, collided, uh, etc. And I guess it automatically updates the motion velocity now. So you don't have that weird thing of uh, having to store it back into the, the property. Yeah, this is so much simpler. Look, I, I think... Um, okay, I can't use the X form on the basis. Uh, let me see, I thought it was on the basis. There's no X form in there. Uh, no, so this is going to be uh, on the transform. All right, this is fine. We're not going to scale our camera. Transform.x form. 
what? Uh, transform 3D. Uh, okay, Securus, actually, if you come next year, uh, just let me know if you go intend to go around Switzerland and uh, you can uh, come to, to our place. So you just, uh, uh, you can get in touch. I'll be, I'll be there. Xform was deleted. Okay, so what do we use now to transform a vector? Uh, do you multiply them? Ah, finally, we can... Ah, oh, that's much better as well than having a method. Uh, transform the basis times... Ah, this is cool. We have the operation now. So that's it. That was just that. Okay. Uh, all right. My character... Okay. So I got the axes wrong. <laughs> All right, uh, first, the speed is too little, so let's go with 20. Uh, yeah, thanks. This is, yeah, the syntax, there's, look, th this would take at least double the amount of lines uh, in the current version. Maybe, maybe not, but I, need, I mean, you need the snap vector, you need all kinds of things. All right, so um, uh, what is it I got wrong in here? Is it the raw direction? So... I said, so you have move left and right. Uh, we're going to do those one at a time. Move left and right works. It's just... Okay, so the Z uh, is not good. Uh, the problem is the transform when I rotate the camera then it starts to go bad. Oh, I should have prepared something for the stream. Um... Why, when my camera rotates, that doesn't work? Uh, you're welcome. Uh, the problem is I'm uh, a bit too... Okay. So now it's going up indefinitely. I wasn't pressing anything. Weird. Uh, okay, and motion velocity. Well, one thing I can do is motion velocity dot y plus equals, and we're going to add uh, gravity uh, right there. Uh, and plus equals gravity uh, times delta, right? Because this is an acceleration. Ah, no, it needs to be negative because. It's the opposite of 2D, of course. All right. What's happening in there? Why is my character going up? Uh, have a good night, Securus. What is going on? Okay, so what if I go with raw direction? Uh, velocity minus equals gravity times delta. Uh, since it's currently in alpha stages, I'm assuming everything currently implemented in Godot 4 is subject to change. I would say, uh, isn't it because you're using the camera local transform? Yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, Okay, one thing I, I don't understand, though, is what's happening with the character going up to the sky, right? Motion of velocity, especially if you want, what I don't get is if I have a vector of zero, 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 the character goes very fast uh, 
Okay, so if I remove the gravity, what is happening? Um, I have no idea what's happening, right? Uh, let's use a high snap length. No, the character is going up in the sky like crazy. And it's 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 gotten worse with the tests. This is what I don't get. Uh, so it's somewhere in the matrix multiplication because you can see uh, without that, it's fine, right? Why use kinematic instead of rigid body? Uh, why not? Gives us a simple control like over you can see it's just a few lines of code. Um, I like the more reliable physics. <coughs> I'm making a simple, uh, <coughs> simple arcade controller. Any chance of using a vector two for direction would solve this? No, you need the um, the vector three because we are in three D in here. Uh, global transform dot basis. Um, Okay, it seems there was something with the scale. I know I'm still using the raw direction. Uh, so, okay, speed times direction. I still have that problem with the character going up, right? Depending on where I turn, I don't get it. Um, I'm getting something off, that's for sure. But I don't get what. Because I think that's the kind of code I use normally. How do you set the up vector if it doesn't take any parameters now? And uh, you go on the character body and the up direction is here. Okay, so I'm going to restore motion velocity dot y minus equals uh, gravity times speed. The, the the things are definitely off. Um, okay, I don't know. I don't know. I'm too tired for that right now. Global transform basis dot Z times input direction. Ah, uh, yeah, the forward axes instead. Um, so you multiply the, the forward vector. Um, so would it be the global transform? Maybe yes. Uh, let's see. Can't multiply it by, I need the, that raw direction. Yeah, no, it's still not working. <sighs> okay, forget it for now. <clears throat> Remember to reset the gravity when colliding, sure. Uh, thanks for backing the Kickstarter. Let's look at where it's at. Uh, where it's at. Uh, no crashes of good at four so far. Um, do you know there's a chance the character body 3D will have a step height like the character controller does for stairs and small obstacles? Uh, I don't know, is your name Jan? Is, is this correct? Um, I would say right now, I think it doesn't have. Uh, you'll have to check if there's an issue and someone who's planning to work on it. Let's see whether the Kickstarter is at. What time is it? Uh, it's going to be 11 already. I think we won't have time to. Wow, we're above 120 Ks. Yeah, this is going up fast. Cool. 
thanks for everyone who's backing the campaign. It's it's really big for us. Um, okay. Uh, I want to go back to Emacs and just move forward a bit. Let's say we tried GDScript. Uh, we tried physics in 3D with failure, but um, we have a couple more things to do. I think I won't get to, to everything. I'm getting too, too tired. And well, you've seen some things are buggy or take some time. Um, yeah, no crashes uh, in two and a half hours. Downloaded for just to check this and you can't export custom classes directly. Yeah, I, I wonder, uh, I don't know what exporting custom classes would mean. Um, I mean, there's a class name thing in GDScript that makes the class register as a type globally in the project. Uh, and you can add classes to Godot from GD extensions, right? Uh, what do you think? Is it safe to use the alpha build for ga a game jam that starts tomorrow? Nope. Uh, 2D SDF, it's the sign distance field you now have access to in shaders and all. Um, it allows you to do things like uh, casting shadows or fog or detect proximity between the surfaces. Um, no, I don't think it's safe to use the alpha build. I mean, for some people it crashes, right? Did you cover auto tile mapping in 2D? Yes, around the start of the stream. Uh, will the full recording be on the channel after the stream? Yes. And will your course for beginners be th free? <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, nope, this is a paid product. Uh, what will be free and open source is the app to learn GScript syntax, right? Which is a, a big thing because I'll come with a course basically, uh, interactive like Codecademy, all those kinds of things. So that will be free. But the, the product that people are uh, paying for on Kickstarter, uh, no, it, it will be a paid product. Um, I've had to make a step height feature. It's not too hard to do with a few Raycast nodes, but yeah, would be nice to have that built in for kinematic bodies. Uh, definitely, definitely. Um, I trying to port a good 3 project will probably lead to lots of issues. Um, hi for hi uh, to everyone uh, watching from Portugal. Okay, what can we do right now? Okay, GDScript docs generation. Uh, if it works, it will be very simple. Um, some test. Uh, Okay, vector three dot uh, axis y and uh, okay, let's see the docs generation if we have it here because I've seen it used from GD extension, just don't know how it works. Maybe I need to register invalid argument. Wait, what do you need? Argument ah yes, the axis y is not a vector. It's uh, given uh, around the up vector. Okay, so class name player. Now what I want to see is uh, if huh, there you go. Docs generation works automatically. You you put doc strings around your things and it creates a docs page for your custom class. This is really cool. This is really, really cool. cool. Wait, so I can use the app to learn GDScript uh, if I'm a beginner at programming, yes, this is the, the idea. We're making an app that will allow anyone to learn the GDScript language in their web browser. So kind of really small practices and challenges that will uh, teach you through practice. Um, two flower games. Okay, someone's asking about the the pledges for the Kickstarter. So uh, I'll go over that real quick. Uh, yeah, so if if you've not seen it, uh, I showcased what we have right now regarding the app. I'll just uh, share that in the chat. 
there's a devlog on the channel, this one, and you can see it a bit in action. Um, so there you can you can learn uh, a few things, uh, the problem that we are trying to tackle, and it started, uh, this was a presentation from a very uh, long time ago, um, about, uh, there we go. So uh, yeah, you can you can see some things, some plans that we have. Okay, on Kickstarter, uh, we have a pledge here where you get the course from this Kickstarter, uh, support the project and the cookbook. Uh, the cookbook is something we made already uh, right there. Um, Note essentials. And this one, uh, I can show you a few a few things how it is and how it works. Well, this is the online version. It's not as good as the. You can download the offline files, right? It'll be a bit better. So you can see the the style with the white background doesn't always work too great. Anyway, um, this is going to go over each node, this uh, or, or many very important nodes, and teaches you to set them up specifically. There are key features. You know, what's the most important features you want to learn first about a node and how to use the node in practice with concrete examples, but recipe style, uh, recipe. It's not like step-by-step, step. it's the, the, we call that cookbooks in programming, which is, um, uh, this is going to teach you how you do this game mechanic, but uh, here's what you need to know to make it. It's not all the steps to make it. So this is not for uh, beginners, beginners, right? Um, I would say that if you want to really go far into making games with Godot, uh, this is very valuable after you learn programming. So you first need uh, good programming skills to make the most out of it. <clears throat> because this is going to, if you have questions about a certain mechanic uh, you want to do, like this one, for example, you want the 3D character in a 2D world, uh, we're not going to teach you all those things in the Learn to Code course um, because those are very, uh, how can I say, they are more specific, right? In Node Essentials, you're going to find lots of things for different projects. I can give you an example. There's uh, uh, someone making games in 2D and then went on to a 3D project. So they use the 2D part of Node Essentials first and for their new project, they are using the 3D part, right? Um, um, yeah, so what I would invite you to do uh, is perhaps check uh, a free sample of this. Uh, do, do we have one? Uh -huh. uh, that's accessible instantly. If you go to this address and enter your email, uh, I'll post this. If you go to this address and enter your email down there, you're going to get at least today, like as soon as you register, the Kinematic Body 2D guide, right? So you have a bit more information um, there, but there we go. Because uh, the, the thing is this mailing series sends you one guide a day for four days. Um, but they are from the node essentials and it's the complete thing right for free. So you can see if you find it interesting and valuable. Okay. Um, so how does set get work in Godot 4 now? Um, it's, uh, uh, how was it? I forgot about the syntax. Do I have, did I keep something around there? Nope, I don't have it. Let's go back to the docs. Okay, uh, this one. And we're gonna go down to scripting and we go to GD script reference. Okay, and we'll go, uh, do we have, uh, there we go, like this. I'm gonna put it on the side just to show you so we can do like Colin at the end, and then we go with a uh, set, and uh, we need to do to put a property name. So uh, every time we get a value, we're going to say rotate sensitivity, 
equals value, right? This is your set of function. You can put it there. Um, and then you can put the, the get, for example, uh, here, and you can return the rotate sensitivity. There we go. So that's the, the simple way. Uh, the most direct for small setters and getters, this is good. Uh, a change that's very important I read is when you, finally, when you, you do rotate sensitivity is equal to one, it's gonna go through your setter always. There's not a difference between using self, like before, um, like that or not. So you don't need to have the separate function, name function that you call every time, all those kinds of things. But you can also do it like that if you want to do it like before. Function uh, set rotate sensitivity and it's going to take a value that's going to be a float. I'll just do my function definition. Um, let me scroll a bit. And so you can say rotate sensitivity equals value. Uh, and then here it's going to be, what's the syntax? It's set equals uh, set rotate sensitivity. There you go. And you can do set comma get or get comma set. Does it work in any order? Equals uh, whatever you can point to a function. Although uh, there's an error because this one takes a value so it's not a getter and it doesn't return anything. So let's complete the, the thing, get rotate sensitivity. And it's going to return a float and return the rotate sensitivity. There we go. No, why did it complete itself? Return rotate sensitivity. Um. Right, set rotate sensitivity. Okay, so I think the order, like you have to do get before set or just one of the two. Uh, set rotate sensitivity can't be used because of its signature. Okay, I don't know what, what that issue is about, but uh, that gives you an idea of how you do things. You can use name functions, you can use anonymous uh, functions right be below the property. Okay, I'm going to uh, move this. Uh, this is water. All right, um, okay. What do we have to test next? That is done. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to cut the stream soon. Which one do you want the most between those? Navigation server, IK, I think I can't test it right now. Like there's quite a bit of setup, right? Um, navigation, so uh, pathfinding, we can try in 2D. Uh, right to left text, particles, the profiler, light mapper decals. Uh, I forgot to rename the set on get. Okay, that was why that was the issue. So what do we do? A bit of particles for something uh, simple. Particles, we have one particles. Navigation. Pathfinding. Yeah, the IK I won't get to because you need to set up the skeleton and all I need to, to learn the basics. I'll, I'll, we'll showcase it at some point, of course. It's just for this stream. Uh, I'm getting a little too tired. It's been three hours, so. Okay, uh, well, we're going to do some pathfinding. Uh, I'm going to go 2D uh, just because... I couldn't make the 3D character work. Next time I would prepare a working character for the stream. So back to the 2D scene. Um, will you ever give away a, your ultimate bundle? Did you even do it already? Uh, giving away we've already done. Uh, 
but it's in very, very specific cases, right? In general, it's more like a, a course for someone in a difficult situation or non-profit, something like that, right? Uh, will there be 2D particles with collision similar to the 3D system? Uh, not sure. Not sure, to be honest. Um, all right, let's see the navigation region. Yeah, the reason for the 3D, well, I can I can try to test it afterwards. So, okay, we're going to make a navigation polygon. There you go. Because the interesting thing to test here is um, how you you get to um, how you can have things that are not if I understand correctly you can have uh, navigation regions like that that are not completely connected or I don't know if if they overlap can you move between the regions okay so we're going to try with the character right um, we're going to go with unhandle input this time and if event dot is action pressed we're going to add a click event in there so i need to go add it to <coughs> click i'm going to try left click okay um so if we press the click event uh target position no target position i'm going to add a new variable going to be equal to event.position okay and we're going to go set physics process to true uh, and we're going to set it to false on ready There you go. This is so we click somewhere, we get a target position, and we start processing um, to move the character to the target. So, um, uh, global position dot distance to distance squared to uh, target position is lower than some threshold. We're going to say ten pixels. Then we set physics process to false. We stop the character. Uh, let's see the there's an option to scroll uh, past the end of file, right? For you to center the, the code a bit more. Um, set physics process to false and return. Right. Uh, then when we click, we want to store the path. I don't know. Well, let's see. Navigation. Agent 2D. Obstacle 2D. It's something probably that moves. Navigation polygon. Okay, I need some docs. See, this is why uh, I'm going for 2D. 3D is probably similar, right? But. Agent needs navigation data. Navigation agent to is physics safe. Okay, so target okay does stuff for you already. Okay. Um so do I need to add a node in there? Navigation agent to D. Distance threshold before a target is reached. Uh, the radius of the agent. So this is how large it is for avoidance. Distance to search for other agents so they avoid one another. That would be interesting. Max movement speed. Um, could go for recreate navigation mesh on the fly, like when uh, strategy when you create a new building. Yeah, it seems because look, there are those. They talk about dynamic obstacles, right? Navigation obstacle um, for collision avoidance. So you just put an obstacle and you you block the way. 
that that was why they remade the whole system, right? Because this is not possible. Um, this is uh, heavy in Godot three. Uh, now I need to understand because I don't think you move the navigation agent directly. So I guess it's a class that you call into. Uh, How do I set the target location? I can set it. And then, uh, is target reachable? How do I get the position? Because it's a node, it's not a node 2D. So it needs to give me... Okay, let's see. Uh, set the target location. We set the desired, uh, this clears the navigation path. Then we sense the past in velocity to co collision avoidance algorithm. It will adjust the velocity to avoid collisions. We'll see, uh, it will emit the velocity computed signal. Okay. Um, okay, you can get the next location. Uh, you can move to that point, making sure that there are no static objects in the way. The agent doesn't have a navigation path. It will return the position of the parent. Okay. But uh, this, when they say navigation path, it's... Okay, so if I understand it well, we'll see if that works. Uh, the agent is going to be navigation agent 2D, right? Um, so, I think this still holds fine, but we don't have to store the target position. Instead, we say agent dot target uh, set. Wait. Okay, uh, we'll have to uh, use things a bit differently. Um, okay. So the agent as navigation agent 2D. Let's see if casting helps in here. So uh, set the target location. It's going to be event dot position. Um, I wonder if this is does it say? It doesn't say if it's global, right? So all right. Then we set physics process. Um, if uh, what is it? Uh, is navigation finished? Uh, it's on the agent, of course. So, and say agent dot is navigation finished. Uh, we return, and here we just want to to do that. We set the target location. Uh, if agent dot is destination reachable. Uh, is target reachable? Then we set physics process true. Uh, is navigation finished? We return. Okay. Uh, is it me or the GLTF important? It's still very buggy. Uh, I've had a character like the model disappeared, the data. So I don't know why uh, it was working fine at the beginning, but then disappeared. Okay. Um, so we're going to say uh agent dot velocity set velocity to uh okay next point is agent dot get next uh location okay and we're going to move uh the we're going to do the good old steering thing uh desired velocity is going to be uh equal to Next, um, next point, no, uh, global position dot direction two, uh, next point. So we calculate the direction multiplied by some speed, right? And we set it, the velocity, the new velocity to the target velocity. Okay. Uh, and that is it. So we get the desired velocity every frame and we're not going to try and do any smoothing or anything like that. 
Uh, I need to set the uh, default thing to run again here. Uh, it's going to be no 2D. Yes, main scene, no 2D, please. Okay, what's in the debugger? Cannot get the path of the node as it's not in the scene tree. Uh, node not found. Let's see. Does it work? No, you still get the error. Cannot get the path of the node as it's not in a scene tree. Let's see, it's right there. Uh, okay, facing a new bug. Uh, what can I try to do? Instead, uh, I'm going to do it like that. Let's see if that works. Navigation agent 2 new, and I'm ready. I'm going to add it as a child. Okay. Okay. So now when I click, um, I guess, so then I need to do um, await agent dot computed well what was it name of the signal target said distance was the signal signal navigation finished path changed target reached velocity computed well this is the 2d agent why is it a vector three Okay, so we wait for the velocity to be computed. I don't think I should do that though. So uh, instead, I think I'm going to connect to that signal, right? Uh, agent dot velocity computed dot connect. You can use signals like those and you connect them to a function. You can use a lambda function. That's a uh, uh, way to do that. So uh, say velocity. Uh, I'm going to use one letter stuff just to scare everyone. Uh, velocity. Ah, oh, no. No, no. Motion velocity. Uh, equals. And so it seems it returns, even for the 2D agent, it returns a vector 3. So uh, we're going to do v dot x, v dot y. We'll see. Hopefully that that should uh, that should work. But yeah, you can do one line uh, lambda functions like that, right? It's pretty nice, uh, and you can create a function and all. But um, I'm just going to keep it short here for this. So uh, anyway, I'm going to move and slide, and that's it, right? And we're updating the motion velocity from here, and that doesn't work. So let's see. Okay, uh, let's see here with a breakpoint. What? Why is it not working? So uh, maybe I'm going to show the navigation and put them behind the character. Then when I'm here, I can see uh, the thing. Okay, why is the click not working? Uh, excuse me. Okay, uh, so maybe I can say if event is mouse uh, input event mouse button uh, and event dot pressed.
Something is... Ah, it's the color rectangle blocking the mouse. Of course. There we go. Okay, we're going to... Sorry, I uh, pressed the wrong button. We're going to remove the breakpoints. And uh, we're going to go back to his action pressed. Click. Okay, let's see now. Crashed. All right. Uh, okay. So when does it crash? Breakpoint. Going to add a breakpoint, breakpoint. Breakpoint, breakpoint. Crash. Do I get an error message in there? Uh, okay. I have no idea what that means. All right. Um, the API looks nice. Then, I mean, let's see. It should get there. Does it crash at set velocity? Does it crash at move and slide? Okay, set velocity, move and slide. And it crashes at move and slide. Okay, motion vector. Velocity equals desired velocity. Is it a problem? Nope. Okay, I don't know what's happening right now. Uh, I think we're going to close it here, if you don't mind. <clears throat> it's been a long stream. Starting to lose my voice <clears throat> a bit, so, and I don't know how to fix this. Um, uh, you're welcome, friendly soul. Um, all right. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> um, yeah. Uh, any questions before before the um, we end the stream? Anyone wants to to know anything? Uh, let's check where the the Kickstarter is at. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I didn't have the chance to um, I didn't have the chance to test every feature before the stream. So this is why some things went awry. The ones I had tried, lighting and all. Um, uh, went well, and uh, the thing is, um, the thing is, um, uh, we didn't have any crash over three hours of Godot itself. Just right now, with the navigation server, the the code is crashing. Um, our website says only one hour left. Uh, this is probably uh, snap. It's probably a time zone issue. It's weird because the before me it says nine hour left. Uh, this is a problem with JavaScript dates. Uh, normally it, the times are set to UTC, so the calculations should be correct. But probably there's a time zone conversion happening somewhere for you. How long have you been? Uh, I have. Will your app help with coding in GDScript? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the goal, but uh, you shouldn't wait too much. Like, you can try to find some uh, tutorials, course, and all to not have to wait because the app will take time to create. Uh, is Godot 4 now recommended to work uh, on a game? Nope. Uh, nine hours for me in Sweden. Okay, that's cool. So, the the that's good to hear it means it should be working fine hopefully for most people the problem is between browsers it seems dates don't work the same way that's what i was reading about javascript um and what else what else how long have you been using godot uh f four or five years now yeah i would say that the best thing Right now, I know. Uh, right, we, we I explained that in a series uh, based on the official documentation. 
right? So right now there are no really great complete course for GDScript. And so uh, we have a learning path for beginners and it's going to explain how to get started and give you free resources to do so. How advanced will the Kickstarter course get? Uh, I mean, it's a course for absolute beginners to learn to program. So we'll cover quite a bit of ground when it comes to programming skills. But of course, it's not going to teach you how to do multiplayer online games or, or advanced algorithms or things like those, right? So um, it's really hard to answer that question. Um, we're going to give people all the tools they need to to program independently. Uh, I just, I'm just gonna open the door. All right, any other questions? Seems like it was a good stream. Uh, will you make a multiplayer tutorial? Um, at some point, probably yes. Uh, the multiplayer API seems to be changing lately. So for those things, we're kind of waiting for, like we're focusing on the things that are more or less stable. Uh, otherwise we'll have to redo everything when Good 4 comes out. So we're focusing on other things now, but I'd like to get to it at some point. Um, what's your impression of Good 4 over, overall? Uh, yeah, much, much better. Um, it's much more usable, like there are lots of very important fixes that once it's stable will make everyone's lives much easier, right? Are there also tests in your courses? Normally there are some. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by tests, if you mean unit tests in the code, no. For the most part we don't use, in the app we'll use some, we have what we call validators. Um, and tests like, uh, how can I say, if you want to do a, um, a certificate, right? Something like that. We don't have those kinds of things. Uh, anyway, certificates are, if you get them on Udemy or they are not worth much, it just means that you went through all the videos. Like at least you click them and you mark them done. Um, and if you mean uh, like something graded, right? Uh, we don't have that. Uh, if you mean assignments, in this course at least there will be plenty of challenges, of things you can do. Um, my philosophy when it comes to that is that in games, uh, if you have a portfolio, you can get a job, right? This is the most important part. Most of the time they don't really look at curriculums. Uh, maybe in larger companies, but uh, for most jobs, it's if you have a portfolio, then your curriculum is not very important. So. Um, uh, I'm more of in the school of uh, selling yourself through your games portfolio. What have happened to make it work on Switch? Uh, uh, that depends on uh, the um, console manufacturers, right? Uh, so I think that was the start of a discussion at some point. I, I remember something like that. Uh, uh, I remember something along the lines of they were discussing the possibility, but um, I don't think it it um, ended anywhere right now, right? And the other manufacturers, well, Xbox, uh, Xbox, because it's using uh, it's Microsoft stuff. You have the universal Windows apps, so uh, there's kind of support for Xbox consoles playstation i think sony is not never going to uh allow you know Godot to have some public export for playstation uh so right now you need private companies that are authorized by playstation for example uh to to get that service but uh, i wonder if Godot is going to move towards the same model as the blender foundation with a company and um, a foundation, a nonprofit, and perhaps they will be able to provide eventually um, console support, uh, commercial, just like Unity Game Maker, everyone else is doing, uh, because you'll have to do that, right? You need to register, get a dev kit, and those kinds of things like publishing to consoles is difficult, uh, regardless of the engine. Uh, why default can build stuff on Switch, but Godot can? The, the problem is um, Godot can't put the source code of the Switch and include that in Godot 
in the GitHub thing. And I think nobody can. Uh, that's what's happening, right? And so when you want to make a game for Switch, you have to contact Nintendo. You need to get, uh, you make a contract with them. You need to uh, buy, I guess, a development kit, which is a special version of the Switch with debug features. I know someone around here who has that, uh, who's doing it with Godot. And so uh, it, it's none of that is available publicly, I think, for any engine. Uh, if Devil has it, uh, I'd be curious to see that and how they did it. But yeah. As far as I know, it will be the same as with Unity. It's you need to get the contract with uh, Nintendo and then you need to get the contract with Default or whoever <clears throat> publishes to Switch or gives you access to that, right? The development, uh, uh, software development kit. So yeah, right now there are uh, two main publishers or not publishers, but persons who can port your game to consoles with Godot or allow you to. There's Lone Wolf Technologies, Lone Wolf Technologies, and uh, um, there's uh, Pineapple Works. So one is just giving you the technology to port the game, I think, like you pay a license to uh, be able to code the Switch version. Uh, and uh, they, they give you an SDK, a switch support for all the features and those kinds of things, but you have to code the, the, you have to take care of exporting to switch and test yourself. And the others, uh, Pineapple Works is more like a game publisher. And I think they will port the game for you. Uh, yeah. And maybe publish it uh, for you as well. Uh, depends on the contracts. Okay, uh, I'm going to close the stream. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, have a good Sunday, Sunday night. And ah, yeah, GOTM has been uh, talking about uh, doing supporting Switch ports as well. Uh, very good note. But with that, I'm going to close the, the stream. Um, be creative, have fun, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.